geekvs.com. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Weekly Game Chat. I am your host, Chris, as always, joined by my co-host, Sean. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. We we say happy holidays here. I <laughs> do not condone that, but I do. If you if you do the happy holiday thing, that's you. But yeah. I, for me, it's Merry Christmas. But for you, if that's not your thing, happy holidays, of course. Thank you. Yeah, happy holidays, indeed. Uh, and John. Hey, hey, happy holidays. <laughs> Keep up the theme here. I can't like not say it to you after I said to him. Happy holidays. There you go. Merry Christmas, John. Oh. <laughs> Happy Christmas, Sean. Happy Christmas. I, I love that about the, the English folk <laughs> across the pond. I tried to, to adapt that here one time. and it, You know, it's actually not a pond. Uh, well, yeah. Okay. It's, it is technically not a top of a morning either, or is it? <clears throat> Depends on how you look at things, huh? Do you think every child... <laughs> In Britain, this term, time of year, is just named Timmy, and he just walks around going, God bless us, everyone. Are they all tiny? Yeah, they're all tiny, too. <laughs> <laughs> and, their, and their dad works for a D, a true Richard, like, if you will. He's like, no, you will not get time off. You will not get paid. <laughs> see, John, that's Charles Dickens is. Yeah. See, a Christmas carol is. <laughs> <laughs> There's apparently a movie out about that. John, yes or no? Do you like the work of one Charles Dickens? Oh, man. I wear the chains I oh. wore in life. <laughs> All right. Jacob Marley. Ooh, I yeah. earned them chain by, by chain, chain and right? yard by yard. Ooh. We lost uh, audio for a minute. I went out. Yeah. Are we good? I think it's... Oh, yeah. we're good. It's our, just our, yeah, just it's our, our actual ears. Okay. Yeah. It's so the audience is like, well, what is he talking of- about? Well, I don't understand. We wear head, uh, headphones, listeners, and I, I will say this. It is a bit alarming when all of a sudden you get no sound. <laughs> we, we immediately, because we're dumb humans, think that our voices are no longer being recorded. If True. I can't hear myself, that means it wasn't or, said. Or you're like me and John, and you, you record a whole episode off the pretense that you sound great in here <laughs> without ever once checking the recording until John has so left it, the building. It never... The, if you would have just glanced over there, you would have seen zero... <laughs> Of what well, we see now, it's this. This was what killed me. Oh, okay. Yeah, the ca- I'm pointing He's, to my camera, aka his. Rigid. And I guess I noticed John was a little weak <laughs> on the pickups, but it's still it sounded great in here. So I just trust that. Uh, I trust our mixer. And it wasn't until I started editing that I went, oh, oh, dang. That turns that's out, it. yeah, turns out our best recording ever is <clears throat> gone. <laughs> any uh, any charities? During Christmas that you guys care about? Yes. Uh, one that I, I... Oh, never mind. Wait, you're yep. Alabama fans. That's right. Moving on! Game of the week! But he, but he can he can say that knowing that it's possible that Alabama no, no, no. gets to Hold play on. Georgia. No, no, no. Let's, let's rewind this up. If he, he, we were going to actually... Weeks ago, not, <laughs> two weeks ago, someone came in here and he was gloating so hard. Trolling you, it. you lost. You're out. You're fine. But I John, I didn't say you were out. But John, who <laughs> was number four? Come Sunday at twelve thirty p.m. Who's number four? Yes, the University <laughs> of Alabama. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. It's a, it depends on which poll you look at. There's only one poll. Yeah, there's John. only one okay, poll for but the on playoff. the brackets you see one, two, three, and four. Number four was Alabama, right? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Actually, I think we were four in all the polls because it was like they all came out early and they were like, yep, we endorsed this. We're good. So it's going to be fun. It is going to be fun. I can't wait. Well, all I, know, the, I know we've got some Clemson fans that have written in. F them. Uh, <laughs> I, I think we had one or two Oklahoma fans that contacted us. Yeah, I know we got an Oklahoma fan. And Definitely. We, we, we got kinda, an LSU fan. We work with a uh, a possible Georgia fan. Yeah. My... Uh, Ugh. Apparently, one of my coworkers, uh, who's a Georgia fan, she uh, Saturday night after uh-huh. they won, got in the truck with her husband, <laughs> drove down to freaking Tumor's Corner, which is like 
heart of Auburn, for those who are unfamiliar with our area, and blasted the Georgia fight song. It's not a good idea. You're just looking for trouble. I would never do that. She said, um, I would expect to be killed. It's funny, though. She said, uh, after the fact, it really didn't matter because no one was there. Because, you know, they were either at home watching the game or they were in Atlanta. And they sure as heck weren't out celebrating afterwards. That's true, yeah. So, really wasn't that big of a deal. But still, I I was like, man, okay. It's hardcore. Hashtag. I don't even go with the crimson <laughs> shirt on there. <laughs> ah, everyone have a good week though. It was pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, it was not bad. I suffered a wound. Ish. A wound? It. <laughs> I had the hood of a car fall on me. <laughs> that does was, not sound like yeah. a slight wound. That sounds like an injury. Well, it's it's an old school hood that's got the uh, hydraulic hinges, so there's not like a stand that you would put up on it. And I was working on it and. You know, Is that me, old school? Well, newer school ish, yeah. I guess. But uh, me being the smart person I was, I had a bat holding it up. <laughs> <laughs> and I go into uh, really, I was trying to get a clamp on a water pump, and my my elbow hit the bat, and um, the hood immediately fell down. And it it John, it's a heavy hood. John was he learned that today that some hoods could be heavy on cars, and the part where it's you know the hood is the hood, but it's got the little thing that kind of shoots down that's going to connect the car to the Mm-hmm. The hood, right? The little clamp thing. I don't know what it's technically called. Clamp. That thing went into my like spine, Ooh, shoulder, God. body really fast. Yeah. And I, I, for a minute, I was shocked. I couldn't get up. My mom walked out. She said she saw my feet, you know, like wiggling. She thought I was dying. <laughs> but it's okay. It's just a little tender. Did you get concussed at all? No. Can, uh, I, can I rub you down? Yes. Um, one Jeff Sanders hoped secretly that my face was smashed into a belt or, and or like oil. So when I came up, I looked like I got head bunted by an engine. That's funny. But let me go get the lotion. Wait, hey, pressure alert. Say the basket thing. <laughs> Put your lotion in the basket. <laughs> Would you? Were, were you bower size 14? I do you. Yeah. So that was a good week, <laughs> man. <you> hard. <laughs> we're a family podcast. <laughs> Are we? <laughs> My kind of family. <laughs> Chris is like, we don't curse. We're family. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> Get in the pit. <laughs> Are we good? Yeah. Is it? I guess Are we you could. guys ready for us to go to the topic? Sure. I was speaking to the audience and you two. Okay. Oh, how are we doing this? Are we, are we doing spoilers? We never really did discuss that out. Uh, it's Welcome been out a while. The, I'm it's not, only been like I'm not going to stress as as evidence. a spoiler for the purpose of making a point. But no, yeah. I'm not going to yeah. go out of my way. I don't want to say um, this. Everyone apparently bought this game on on Black Friday, so <laughs> so there's probably a bunch of people playing it right now. We should probably we'll, we'll be nice. Hey, listeners. just skate around it. Don't go too deep. Yeah, play just the tip. We won't. We won't give the biggest spoilers in this game because there are some some meaty point parts to it. So yeah, there is. Uh, <laughs> what? Well, Anyways, what uh, we won't say is that there's not. Oh, dang it! <laughs> Nine. What? what? We're not even in the topic yet. Yeah. What did you? What? You can't talk about that. What? You guys gonna be okay? <laughs> <laughs> Shutting it down. Why didn't you eat all of your chicken salad today? This is what you say because I had three scoops. I got engulfed in your wife. <laughs> uh, On to the next to, part, Chris. <laughs> talking to your wife. That's wow. Huh. Send that clip to uh, someone in the morning. Yeah, you should have just went on with it when I said it would have been. It would have made for good podcasting. Thanks. Now, yeah. now we've now we're just sitting there talking, waiting on the transition. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you ready to go? Mm-hmm. I uh, <clears throat> yeah. Topic time, 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 time. The topic is after what seems like forever, Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. Nine! Who farted? I don't I think that Probably was Penny. Penny. Oh my god. Yeah, that's pretty rank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he just slowly struts into the kitchen. Way, he came under the table. Wave two. And it went around you guys precisely. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That was a surround Good sound girl. fart. Oh, wait, it's coming over here now. <laughs> That's terrible. Oh, man. What yeah. Feed her dog food. Uh, she, <laughs> she does have different dog food right now. Why would you do that? 
Well, it's the same brand, but like it's the chicken and um, rice one. Chism. Why would you do that? Because they didn't have her usual one, and she was out. So you so you didn't mix it a little no, bit. No, well, I found it doesn't matter because it's still the same brand. It's just a different flavor. He said That's the same all. thing. That How do you know said. it's the same flavor? Right. I you know. Have you ever tried a piece of dog food? Try. <laughs> um. Have, 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 have so you, Wolfenstein too. Have you? Um, no, have you? Yeah. <laughs> Have it's you tried the wet or the dry? Dry, not the, the wet. That's why I don't eat like potted meat and Vienna sausages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or uh, chicken salad. I love chicken salad. Um, I will put that inside me, John. <laughs> Anyways, Wolfenstein 2, the new closet. <laughs> <laughs> the latest from Machina, Machine Games? Machinima? Machine, machine Games. Yeah, I can't remember which one it was. Makers <laughs> of uh, Wolfenstein. <laughs> The new blood and Wolfenstein, the old blood. No, <laughs> or whatever it was. Hold on, and Take Wolfenstein, two. first Wolfenstein, blood part one, the new order. There you go. And then the expansion called the Wolfenstein, old the old blood. There you go. So I knew there was a new and an old in there. I just, what was the first Wolfenstein? Wolfenstein, the official Wolfenstein. There's been many versions of it even before, 3D. but it was Wolfenstein 3D. Mm-hmm. Was the first Wolfenstein back in nineteen? It was the first 19. Wolfenstein <laughs> three back in nineteen ninety two ah. that came out from ID Studios. Oh, yeah. I did. And then there was Return to Castle Wolfenstein. <clears throat> yeah. And then there's a bunch of others we don't really talk about too much unless you're just really really hardcore into Wolfenstein. I will say that uh, on a quick Google search of Wolfenstein two, they mm. are nominated for a ton of things at the Game Awards. Mm. They are. And Wolfenstein 3D is considered the father of modern day shooters. For sure. Yeah. No, kind of yeah. did that. And then it's they, sort of a fast paced. Um, so it was before high Doom? energy shooter. The team it that was made before that. Doom. The team that made that then made Doom. Ah, okay. And you can actually see kind of the early properties of what they would use for the demons in there. Because there was like zombie Nazis and they looked very much in the same shape just without the. The red skin, if you will. Like if you blur your eyes and you look at a screenshot of Wolfenstein and then a screenshot of Doom, mm. they kind of look the same. Yep. Definitely. Quick turnaround back in oh them days. God, that's right. Buddy, how do I get away from this Wikipedia plea? Donate. Did oh, you yeah. donate? No. Did you donate? No. There's an X you can click, I think. <laughs> I, I did. I found it. Yeah. I just want to know if you guys donated. He it, says he's smart. <laughs> Says he knows technology. He was trying to school me and everything. I just though. stopped reading it. <laughs> I just was that, was that me? Up. Was no, that, that was me doing an impression of me. Oh, okay, okay. Because I was like, that kind of sounded like me. <laughs> no, it did not, Sean. I'm not falling for that. It sounded exactly like just you. like the guy. We are doing a terrible. We're job doing of great. Rolling into we're, this we're, Wolfenstein. No, we're giving you background on Wolfenstein. Yeah, and, and we're franchise. providing entertainment as we go, Chris. You Do just have to break that part. You just oh. want to rush us along. Yeah, Put the maybe. mic down, for God's sake. You can take the mic home <laughs> with you. They're saying that because I'm actually holding my mic. And you're at I, home. Yeah, I have to do that so I can swivel around and look at You don't have to do screen. that. We could get you one of those boom mic things. Why can't you put the mic there and just engage us? Because no. I like to look at the levels. Yeah, he's getting ready for emails. The levels on. don't matter. We trust you. Emails are like an hour away. <laughs> <laughs> we actually got a few this week. Too. Ooh. Right? Yeah, I like buddy. it. Um, so, yeah, Wolfenstein 2 kind of picks up pretty closely after the events of Wolfenstein 1, a.k.a. <clears throat> apparent, your apparent rescue of uh, the, the end results of Wolfenstein 1. You mean when you kill Death's head and destroy his headquarters? On the moon. <laughs> well, that, that didn't happen on the moon. Wasn't it on the moon? No, that wasn't the last area. I just remember going to the moon. Yep. It's yeah. kind of hard to forget. Yeah. You we like, definitely went to the moon. Get to go uh, to another place, kind of like the moon in this one, too. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. I was like, man, apparently these Nazis really invested in uh, in NASA. That's right. <laughs> That's the Nazi aero <laughs> space. <laughs> the NASA. The, the, no? No. Okay. That didn't you don't really need it. Yeah. You don't mm. need to see mm. right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but yeah, um, picks right up and... Then kind of does a little of a skip forward as we continue the epic tale of one B.J. Blaskowitz as, as he aims to take down the Nazi regime, which has apparently won World War II. Spoilers for the first game. It, it's been a while. 
The game game basically primarily takes place in a 1961 occupied, Nazi occupied America. This game is freaking amazing. (laughs) I would have to agree, Chris. I I was very surprised. I enjoyed Wolfenstein, uh, the new order. I didn't play the old blood. Don't touch me, John. But what? What? What happened? I think uh, if turn around, this is probably would be my pick right now for of the major AAA games for the best voice acting I've heard all year. Oh, for sure. Yeah, there's just no question, and that's what makes this game great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like just the first scene uh, with General, um, what's her face? I can't remember. Angle. Thank you. Uh, is about as memorable to me. Yes, for those who have played Far Cry 3, as the first time I met good old Voss, and he came in and asked me if I knew the definition of insanity. <laughs> it was about on that level, and it that is very rare for villains in video games. Like, she establishes herself immediately <clears throat> and is memorable, and every time, even though she's not in the game that much, every time she shows up, you pay attention. To what she's doing and you sit there on pins and needles wondering what's about to happen because you just think it's not going to be a good outcome for anyone yeah she's reminiscent of a lot of a lot of villains that i don't know have sort of made their mark in pop culture and cinema things like that mm-hmm. um one of the things she's very she's a sadist you know yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah. she's pure evil incarnate and she just is capable of anything. That I mean, the thing she goes to, um, basically with the villain and everything that's going on in the world, it gives you no qualms. It gives you no hesitation no. about killing Nazis and what that means. Every yeah. single Nazi in that world deserves to die. And by God, you're going to do it. For sure. For sure. Um, yeah, I think like just the scene of her, even the way she treats her own daughter. In that opening scene with her, you're just like, oh, my God. You know, it's not just like she's mean. It's a yeah, she's sadist. And there's just no other way to go. But at the same time, kind of like I guess the closest comparison movie wise people might make would be uh, Christoph Waltz in in, in Glorious Bastards just because, you know, it's Nazis. I I, Uh, I, I need to interject and say that I absolutely adore that movie. Right. Right. (laughs) You know, like he's not she's not as obviously as like happy go lucky as he is at times. But it's that same thing like you. You just you can't help but watch. But she uh, at the same time to watch is like, oh, God, I'm going to pay for this. I don't know when. Well, in its in its absurd intro and that absurd scene with her and you're, you're you can be heavily distracted by how by how god awful she is one yeah. of the, one of the she's frustrated with her daughter mm-hmm. uh because one in particular reason is she is you know forgive me she's considered by them grossly obese yeah i think it will and if you recall from a historical perspective mm-hmm. The Nazis are a party that believes in the one pure, perfect race. Correct. And they there was would, very um, low tolerance for that type of a thing. So it's like in a way, and, and this might be a little bit controversial, in some sick, twisted way, mm-hmm. Engel is showing love and concern for her daughter. Sure. They're going to kill you and I can't protect you if you don't straighten up your act and become a hateful Nazi like me. I actually I didn't take it that way. I think she was just like, I don't care. You're embarrassing me. was kind of the thing I got. And she's like, I will do just I will treat you just like they are if I have to. Well, she did allude to the fact that I can't protect you from this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, It Um, it, it kind of it's reminiscent. If you ever watch uh, Man in the High Castle. Yes. um, Yes. he, He discovers that his son has a has an incurable ailment. Um, and it's not just some sort of, oh, we'll have to figure out how to deal with this. It's no, he hides it from the public because mm. they're going to kill that kid if they find out he has that ailment. So it just kind of kind of gives you a picture that can be very mm-hmm. hard to catch into the into the mentality and the and the eugenics back then of Nazi Germany. Sure. Yeah. People forget there was, um, you know, of course, they lost. So we we. <clears throat> 
didn't get to see luckily their full fruition of what the world would look like in their eyes but yeah it's very, there was there was very a, different yeah there were a lot of hints as far as when you start to actually uncover the history of the nazis and what that country was like while you were there uh but everybody knows about the nazis they were trying to find the, the mm. ark of the covenant they were trying to find the holy grail <laughs> Uh, <laughs> they just, they're just always looking for things. There was that fight they had with Cap. There was that. And, uh, I believe. See, John Cap was short for Captain Cap America. And, Cap and Crunch. Yeah. <laughs> Old Red Skull himself. <laughs> but to, but to your point, Sean, about Inglorious Bastards, this game sort of has a feel, has a kind of a Tarantino. For sure. Attitude with it. It's, it, it's, it gets away with things that most, uh, video game stories or movies for that matter wouldn't get away with because it really in my mind you can get, get away with a whole lot if you have great mm. great characters because you know th- there was discussion back in the a few months back before this movie came out in light of all the things that have been video happening game. this year did I say movie? Yeah. Yeah, forgive me <laughs> around the time that this video game was coming out due to the things that were happening Charlottesville things like that protests on campus Richard Spencer what, you, what Richard Spencer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> games media was really wanting this game to say something yeah but I'm happy to report that this game doesn't really say anything other than it makes some fun of them than, for other sure then these are yeah. Nazis and Nazis are evil yeah. that's really all you need to do but they were kind of going forward and demanding that it be some sort of story reflecting the times we're living in now and I was like Eh, no, I'm that's too it, much. Like, it we just, still want to sell a game. It just does its thing, and and mm-hmm. what it should do is that it reminds you, like all those people who stand and are all about supporting mm-hmm. the Nazi movement today. It's like this is that stark reminder of like, oh, you want to see what this would look like? Okay, here it is. And you know, there are those moments where you're like, geez, like you know, where when you first get to uh, Manhattan and you. And you realize, like, one of your people, uh, Gracie, who's African-American, like, that she's on the run. And everyone in New Orleans has been boarded up because, you know, uh, pretty much it's drive out all the um, of all the minorities that are within the United States. You know, uh, it's putting order as to the way they see fit and the way you should have to live your life. As you said, like, you have to be fit by their standards or else you'll be killed. And they don't care. If you don't conform to them, you will be replaced. You will be pushed out of their society. And that's where I'd say their commentary was. But that's about it. You know, it's not like, yeah, coming through and and saying like, well, let's let's parry this to, you know, the protests that we're seeing right that. And that's that's probably the smart thing because it doesn't make sense for their story. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been working on this game for a couple of years now. They should stick to what they were developing. The and Nazis who, have and who knew? Bad stuff. Who knew that the KKK <laughs> and the Nazis had something in common? Well, I actually like how they, uh, the Nazis, kind of refer to them as idiots in the game. Yeah, yeah, like redneck hillbillies <laughs> is what they're calling them. Um, but yeah, it's a. Uh, I think yeah, it's very Tarantino, and I think it gets away with what it is. Like there are times where games just feel like they put violence in, and there's no reason for it. It's just like we're just doing this because. This one, like, yes, there's a lot of violence in this game, but given the aggression of, like, hate and evil that's been cast towards these cast of characters, you can't blame them for how they would feel and how they would act, right? Um, You know, whether it be, uh, what's the name of the preacher that's in New Orleans um, that's, like, making the moon shine and everything? I forget. You know, like, having that scenario where you... The, the idea of this character is like he wakes up every day and he's fending off trying to just protect the people that's around him. Or like I said, for the person you meet for Gracie, who has a child with her husband and just wants to provide for her child in a way, you know, you can understand why they feel that way. Or, of course, Terror Billy himself um, with all the evil that's become him through the years. Like, yeah, they these people they want every nazi to die and they do not care that every single one of them dies they will not give you there will be no quarter for anyone involved in this right is basically the idea but then you're fine because then you also have uh max haas uh in his pig and that's hilarious to watch (laughs) thought we weren't doing spoilers 
Well, I mean, he was in the first game. <laughs> there's a you always skirt. You always get to get away with doing that. There is no spoiler in that. He's if literally we would have done trolling. What Chris just did he would have cut our heads off? He he is literally trolling you right now because he knows you don't have the context. <clears throat> bottom line is it t- it just tells a great story, <laughs> and that's the bottom line. It's um, you get you get some you get some background into B.J. Blazkowicz's um, character. What mm. kind of what kind of shaped him as a as a person? Um, his relationships early on in his life, relationships with his father and his mother. I yeah. will say, as a critique of it, it did it didn't really take that to a completion, if oh, you ask me. No, but I thought it did. It, it gave you insight, but it didn't give you sort of a, a mm. resolution to his past. I mean, the resolution you might be thinking of to mm. me, it's sort of a a lazy way of bringing something full circle kind of like kind of like the sopranos finale i kind of (laughs) don't know that either i'll say this that scene the resolution i kind of predicted the way it was going to go down sure but that's kind of and i was fine with it because it's been done like that before and i was like okay i'm cool with it doing that way i think as far as like the homage the idea is to show what did it homage homage. (laughs) what i'm trying to say here it gave Um, homage to something it did. I mean, like there have been past stories like this. Like, this isn't an uncommon thing. Like where the idea is, BJ comes from the broken home, and his father has like he's no perfect man, you know. Yeah. And I think the point of it, in a way, is to show one, you know, it's not like everyone in America before this war was perfect or like had the best ideas or or something like that. Because there's definitely some c- controversy. As far as uh, some of the views that his father shares, uh, but also I think it does a good job to show that, like later on in its resolution, that maybe sometimes you can't fix everyone or change someone's mind, no matter how much you may want them to. Well, that, so, that's a critique on yeah. on that on the father as a character. I mean, I'm talking yeah, about yeah. resolution. It, it it opens up a psychological study on B.J. Blazkowicz that, sure, it, that sure. it never closes. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it, it's it takes it takes some calmer moments, and it takes advantage of some, of some calmer moments where he's reflecting back on his childhood. Yeah, the, the the good moments where he's introduced to a friend, the the not so great moments of domestic abuse. But it never. The only thing that a a psychologist would look like is every Nazi you kill is your father. Yeah, kind but of. But but the game doesn't really say that, and it never brings it to a close. It's sort of a it's sort of an idea that they they introduce. Yeah, they leave open. That's not even what they do. They they don't leave it open. They mm-hmm. it's like a nine year old leaving the door open well, when the air's on. It's well, it's on. like it's not a good to everything. Look, I'm critiquing something for a game that I absolutely love. Sure, sure. The story itself was really good. The characters were sharp, but that one element of this story, they kind of left on the table. Well, and I thought it was a little bit I think, lazy. Personally, I would say this without <clears throat> spoiling too much. It's hard not to. Uh, I think the fact is with this parent, it's not just his dad. There's also his mom too. And to me, that stuff is <laughs> like his mom, like, no, he, like there's a very vast hey, I know difference between yeah. both parents. Yeah, and like, you. I think it's important to look at that. And to me, there's closure in that. Like there is, there's a part of that. And I am not going to go into detail here that to me closes. And I think John knows what scene I'm talking about. And that's like, but I would say that's lazy. Okay. Anyway, we're, we're debating something that everybody's going, what? I'm going to, I'm going to play the game very soon. Jeff's going to let me borrow his copy. So I can't spoil it. Have you played the first one? Huh? Spoiler. <laughs> You're like, spoiler time. <laughs> no, should I? I've heard from multiple people, you don't, no. You really? don't absolutely yeah. need the... I, I got Wikipedia. Yeah, the big thing that you might be a little <laughs> bit lost on if you Nuke skip bombs, straight... BJ Blaskowitz. We're good. Can Nazis. You, kennel that dog. <laughs> if you skip straight to... Uh, to this one about the wars you're going to have is the people who are on your ship at the beginning of the game you won't have some of the insight of like who they came and that's one of the criticisms i would i would say is that a lot of those characters from the first game they kind of just get relegated to the side they're just back there and that's okay because they make appearances every now and then and because all the new characters that come in are so interesting that you don't feel like there's a void you're missing. Like that happens a lot with a lot of sequels when you have a huge party and then you have to throw more in is that the new people you introduce, 
just aren't that interesting. I don't think that's the case here. I think they're all freaking interesting. Yeah, sure. And that's what drives the game. And Um, lastly, on this point, I would say um, you have to admire a game that has the ability to expose the player to absolute brutality. Sure. And in the very next scene, you're laughing your butt off. And they may be crying. Let me ask you this, though. Um, reading, I did not know this particular point. You guys have played it. I'm interested mm-hmm. to see how I how I look at it. Do you plan on playing the game again? Yes. Mm-hmm. The reason I ask you that is because there is apparently a point very early, early on. Yeah. You have to make a morality decision. It's in the first and game. And it literally alters. It's in the first game, too? So that's, that's where good. it comes from. They... Um, so in the first game, very early on, you have to decide between saving two people, Ferguson, who's like your buddy through through years, and the the new young recruit, Wyatt. And they each play a little bit different because of that in this game. It, if you don't remember who you picked the first time, it doesn't matter because the very first thing this game does is throw you right back to that moment to yeah. make the choice again. Death's head makes you choose between two people. Now, mm-hmm. as I recall from that, I don't remember who I chose in the mm-hmm. first game, but I remember choosing somebody and Death's Head killing the other person. They like they toying kill with him. you and say you may, you choose him to live, but but because you chose he him, he kills the other person. He kills him, but then he also then takes the uh, skull or the brain out and puts it into the mech, and that that you have to fight there at the end. And that's the idea is that you're fighting the guy <laughs> that you, it's just, uh, yeah, this is the kind of thing. This game no, I know. And I read all the, I read the plot very, yeah. very carefully. Uh-huh. I've, I've let Jeff tell me about it a little bit. I was interested to see, interested to see what you guys were going to say about it and the kind of things you're doing throughout this game and the kind of ways you're being taunted by your enemies and yeah. just the, the entire world of it being a successful Nazi campaign in the world, second world war. And now it's 1961 and the Nazis are the government. It's crazy. That that's I, I want to play that because, yeah. like you said, you have you have an absolute reason to kill every Nazi. Yep. <laughs> I mean, look, this is my this is where it, it, you know the term irreverence comes in. Ooh, it, it just and I, and I'm going to spoil this because everybody spoils this. You, ah, can, you can go on IGN ah, and watch this; it's fine. No, you wake up no. from remember, a coma. Remember, oh remember yeah. When I um, took my headphones off because I wouldn't hear it. Yeah, but it's working, isn't you, it? <laughs> You wake up and this is the this is the part that makes you immediately fall in love and get what this game is all about. You wake up in a coma. Oh yeah. Your your team is under attack by Nazis. And what and what you do is you try to get out of bed, you fall to the floor because you can't walk and your internal organs are you failing. You haven't moved in 6 months. <laughs> you haven't moved in 6 months. You crawl and strap your butt into a wheelchair and you roll yourself around the sub and kill every Nazi in sight. You're a man in a wheelchair and the Nazis still cannot kill you. It is yes. beautiful. I love it is Dave hilarious. Blaskowitz. I was laughing and grinning ear to ear with the concept. I'm rolling through on a, yeah. in a wheelchair Just shooting doing Nazis. Work. It's, it's doing funny. the work of five men. Yeah. It's funny to me. I told John the other day um, in thinking <laughs> in this game, like, you know, a lot of people, there was such a huge wait for there to be a new <clears throat> Duke Nukem game and then when it came out when they finally released Duke Nukem Forever it was kind of maybe a reminder to people it's like eh, maybe some things should just stay where they were you know they're from a uh, uh, spot of time and you know they don't age as well as maybe you'd hope I feel like BJ Blazkowicz has is is the natural progression for Duke Nukem like this is the Duke Nukem that can work in today's thing he's still BA doing his thing but he's not like turning around every second going, come here, baby. Yeah, get that. You he's, know, he's just he's, he's just allowing wrecking. the world to be offensive. He's still exactly the knight in shining armor. Exactly. And it works. And like, you know, he's not like, you know, Terror Billy is not a not the most outstanding man in society. But you at the same time, you freaking you're you know, you're rooting for him the whole entire time. Yeah. So let's talk about the, the game and, how, and its design and. You know, well, it looks beautiful. I can tell you that much. It does look beautiful. It's not, uh, the, yeah. most, it's not lo- the most beautiful game ever. I will but say it's good looking. It's a, uh, it's a smooth sixty frames. That's what yeah. I, that's it's what I, just, I guess I meant. Jeff showed it to me on a uh, a gaming monitor with mm-hmm. with less than one millisecond response time. What he, was he playing? All right, on talking PC? points. Huh? Was he playing it on PC? <laughs> no, no, he's playing on his PlayStation just okay. with a gaming monitor. He loves his gaming monitor. I'm okay. trading my big TV in for a gaming monitor. You are, are you? aren't you? 
that dude, if you did it, get out of here. You would love it. Get out of here with that. Get out of town with that. Give me take that with you. Someday I'm gonna get the. Uh, <laughs> I do want at some point get the uh, the ones that are now the top of the line, which are like the G Sync monitors, where it just automatically reads what your graphics card is and knows how to optimize. But uh, that's we, the crazy thing these monitors do now. We don't. We just want to hook our PlayStation to it, Chris. But PC <laughs> Ultimate Master Race. He's blinking. He doesn't know how to process what I just said. <laughs> but the game is the game is smooth. Uh, the shooter mechanics. I mean, it, it's like t- to me. Not that I'm an expert on this stuff, but it's the best shooter I've played since Doom. Well, that's and, he, and it's a different kind of shooter in many ways. But I would play, so it's the I, best shooter I've played since I'll Wolfenstein: say, The New Order. <laughs> I've played three first-person shooters this fall: one in space, one in World War II. Uh, proper in one in fictional post World War Two, uh, I, I think yeah, I agree with you. This is definitely the best handling. Which one was uh, in space? Destiny. That would be Star Wars Battlefront Two. Oh yeah, okay. Old micro transactions. Already forgot about it. No, I didn't. That's a yeah. good game. Yeah, I won't forget mm-hmm. about it. Sorry. He's gonna say it's not. Mm-hmm. It's he, not okay. He doesn't have a switch anymore. He doesn't matter to me. He does. What does that have to do with it? Because. Uh, uh, Wolfenstein's coming hey, out on 2018. Spin cycle. Get out on the there. Switch. That's what it has to do with it. <laughs> you gonna play this game? Can I tell you what everyone I'll, says about Doom on this? Um, at, anyways. Least, at least it's on there. I, yeah. What? So the game has a couple of. Uh, <laughs> the game is not. The game's not designed as a stealth game per se. No, it's not. But you do have the option of using some stealth elements <clears throat> as as how you approach combat, and you can do two. You can it, it gives you a little bit of agency to go in and and guns blazing, or you know, go in with uh, some some stealth. And one and when an area opens up, you typically have uh, one or two commanders that are controlling the area. And these commanders have access to an alarm system. So as far as stealth goes, if you want to go the stealth route, um, you just got to sort of work your way through the area <clears throat> and and take out those one or two commanders. Mm-hmm. If you somehow get detected by those commanders, an alarm goes off and more enemies flood into the area. So it becomes a, an all-out death match. Um, the pure shooter person would, you know, probably just prefer to go in guns blazing. The alarm will go off, and those enemies will come in. Uh, but and then some, you run, <clears throat> and then you run and gun and hide mm. and you know do all that stuff. But for the for the ones who who do prefer a stealth per, per approach, I always try. I can typically take out the first commander, but the second yeah. commander is usually further in deep. <laughs> into the. <laughs> I mean, I, I did things into like the area. Most, a lot of times, I could get them, but. It's best to to try to get at least one of them taken down, yes. so the enemy floodgates won't open as severe. It's I've <laughs> sat there like I, I put. I, you can upgrade the weapons in this game. I upgraded the uh, the mini machine or uh, assault gun uh, to have silencers yeah. on it for the sake of it. And even <laughs> then, I found it to be useless. It still really didn't. It was yeah. like it was like a mixture of times like where you wouldn't get detected versus getting detected. And once you notice on like, there's a meter up there that's white when you're not being detected and it turns, starts to turn orange when they're being alerted every single time that thing starts to go at all, you're yeah, screwed. You just it, might as yeah. well get up. I just and, don't see this game as being a stealthy one. It's, 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 it's right. not, it's not technically a stealth game, but the stealth is just a functionality of making the enemy <clears throat> engagement a little bit less severe. Yeah. Right? Gotcha. Well, um, I'm known as dual wield, uh, Sean, that's so where this speak, is fun. Speaking of that, I mean the <laughs> yeah. dual wielding. I, I'm pretty sure the dual wielding was in the first game, mm. but there's nothing more satisfying than getting swarmed and taking two shotties and just doing close range Doom style combat. It gave me uh, great flashbacks to to my Halo days, yeah. and that's that's a high clom- compliment see, and, for and me. <laughs> the thing is, I never really liked wielding du- dual guns in Halo, mm. but this one I I, I really embraced it. He, hmm? Nothing. Oh. Penny's just like I gave Penny a bone and now she's on the couch like I don't know what to do. <laughs> but anyways, uh, but then uh, Chris, tell us about the uh, the perk system. Ah, yeah. So you get different <clears throat> perks in the game. Um, 
<laughs> not really. Uh, there, I mean, are you talking I'll about take, like I'll the? Are you talking first. about the upgrade system as far as weapons? No, no the upgrade system. Yeah. I, well, you, go ahead and do that one since that's what yeah. You know. Like so, as you go on <laughs> throughout the world, there's upgrade kits, uh, and you can choose to upgrade your guns. Well, uh, Chris, and, wait. What does he say whenever he finds an upgrade kit? I can't remember. Um, I don't remember. Found an thing. upgrade kit. Oh, well, yeah, that's how Time to right. get on upgrading yeah, my Yeah, BJ weapons. Blaskowitz is, uh, he's not the deepest poet. <laughs> he kind of speaks in, in obvious absolutes. <laughs> he's like, hey, new gun. Well, I don't All know if you're right. going to kill me a Nazi. I don't know if you remember this, but he does that same thing in the first game. He does this inner monologue remember. in his, you know, and this in the first game, I'll never forget. I I like I, how you think it's an Aaron monologue. I don't think it is. I think he's just sitting there. Is he saying found me a gun? <laughs> <laughs> he's like the Forrest Gump of yeah. uh, you know. He can kill, but so, he's not the fastest man. I died really stupidly in the first game. I fell off a bridge, mm. and as I was fa- falling, you would think that BJ would scream bloody murder because he's falling to his death. But he yeah. calmly says, "Stupid way yeah. to die." Yeah, <laughs> sounds about right. Um, but yeah. As you get guns in this game, you'll find upgrade kits, and every time you get an upgrade kit, I believe every gun has like three has three slots slots you can upgrade. Uh, so it's really just comes down. You're not. I don't know if there's enough to upgrade every gun to max because I really wasn't exploring. That doesn't surprise me, but for the most part, if you find guns you like in this game, you can easily upgrade them. You can turn them on or off because they do actually sometimes change properties of the gun, like the main assault rifle. You can get a scope for, but the uh, trade off is then it's a single shot versus mm-hmm. continuous shot. So you just kind of have to pick and choose. Uh, as far as perks, I remember later on in the game, there comes a moment where basically you get a tactical perk that you can decide. And no, see, now you're not talking about. I'm no, trying to remember. The game I, has I, it's a, been a the game, week or two. It, it has a perk <laughs> system where, for example, if you. If you stealth kill a number oh, of, of commandos gotcha. or whatever, yeah. it it the game the perks allow you to move faster when you're crouched. It's um, or if you launch a, a hatchet towards somebody and kill somebody with a hatchet multiple times, yeah. over time you'll get to be able to carry if, more hatchets. If people like have, uh, <clears throat> if people have played Oblivion from uh, Elder Scrolls, it's very much in that system where the more you do something in this game, the more perks you get for it. More ability with that you get so if you sneak around a lot then you can eventually and kill people while sneaking you can eventually run while sneaking um if you use a certain type of gun you might get more ammo or something like that off of ammo crates or something yeah for that and if and if you um and regarding the way you want to play stealth wise or just guns blazing Uh those upgrades those three upgrades attached to each weapon can go can gear towards whichever play style you want. There's silencers yeah. which help you um, be gear, silent. Be silent. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> yeah. And then there's and then there's scopes on certain weapons that make you be able to snipe from a distance. Things yeah, like yeah. that. Um, can so, you do a scope silencer combo? I don't think you can. I'm out. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. That that speaking of the machine gun, where you can add that silencer, I did find the same problem. You have mm-hmm. to make sure you 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 kill that person quick. Yeah, exactly. With because with the silencer on that machine gun, it makes it a weaker. It's like gun. you pretty much have to have a headshot. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if they're wearing you armor, know. you're screwed. So the silencer um, pistol is. Are the characters that are the you know the the Nazis are they like bullet sponges? Or are they not really? Not too much, and I, I guess it probably changes uh, the higher difficulty. Well, you, you played it on easy, yeah. So. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding, but uh, I played on regular. Speaking uh, of easy, mm-hmm. what is the the best? One of the best. It has some of the best. Uh, when you go in and you choose which uh, difficulty level yeah. you want to choose, I can't remember all of them, but it, one of them is is uh, Dad. Can I play? Yeah, or Daddy. Can I play? And it has it's BJ in a bonnet, in a bonnet, in a in a. Um, because it's for like uh, little kids. pacifier, and I've heard during the cutscenes, mm-hmm. he actually wears the bonnet and pacifier. If Weird. you choose to play it that way, like it, like the game deliberately mocks you for doing what you're doing. Like mid range is Terror Billy, yeah, uh, and then you know it goes down the Terror line Billy. of um, yeah, I can't remember what the top one. It does was. these catchy expressions. Um, yeah, is Sean okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm I don't good. Know. <laughs> Uh, 
But yeah, I'm excited to play the game. <laughs> I guess my only criticism, what my criticism of the game was more so with the enemies. I don't think the AI with the enemy is too great. It's kind of like, as John said, it's this loop of try not to get detected, kill those um, officers as quickly as possible and know that once they discover you, you need to really wrap it up and go because never oh. because <laughs> <laughs> because basically the idea of the AI of this game isn't so much to outflank you or maneuver you. It's just as soon as they're alert that you're in the area to continuously send as many soldiers as you can. Eventually it becomes something you can't overpower. Like you need to, it's kind of like in a way kind of how doom is like when, when you are, when your back is against your wall, you, you're best served by pressing forward and just trying to muscle your way through and get to the commander you need to take out. And at times, like, there are points in the game where, you know, depending when you get a save point, it's like, it's a little frustrating sometimes. You're just like, you're good, oh, dude. Well, like, yeah, when you have a save point, it's like, oh, by the way, it just saved you when you only have like 20 armor and like 30 health oh like, that like my yeah. halo save point i had exactly yeah, i You're got like, you okay it, it's not a fun combination <laughs> um so it's called get good yeah, yeah. basically like I, I i had some parts in this game like choke points where it took me a minute to get by it just choke because point. because of where i was uh reloading choke uh, every time blah, blah. <laughs> but eventually i got through you know and i gotta get through this uh, but the thing is is I was telling John, this game, it's very much in the way of... Um, Why were you always telling John things? Why weren't you telling me things? Well, he played the game. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. Uh, but it's very much reminds me in the way of Uncharted in the sense of regardless if you get upset with the bad breaks you might get from time to time with the AI and the save points, you're always awaiting that next cutscene. And like you want to see what's going to happen next in the story. There is a moment like me and also Jeff were talking and then he was behind me and he was like, man, this Ooh. is getting crazy. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. You? And I didn't want to spoil it, but I'd be like, no, you haven't even gotten to the most effed up part of this game yet. And he's like, okay, I think I'm here. I think this is it. I'm like, no, you're nope, still not, not there it. yet. <laughs> like this game has a moment that I literally just went, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> but, happening. But, but that goes to how the game gets away with that. Yes. Because it sort of It actually laid the groundwork pretty well early on, too. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. I guess so. Um, but yeah. Definitely uh I would give this game a nine I mean or higher. You have to if you would not have I don't care if it's not, you better give it a nine. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely uh, one of the best games I've played this year. No question oh. about it. Um, Corporate answer. It's one of the best. December. It's one He's of the, the one who gave it a number. Yeah. <laughs> no, I gave it a pun. Yeah, yeah. it's a nine, dude. He would, he would give it a nine in real life, too. No, I'd give it a ten. Oh, exactly. See, we'll, see how, eight. how are we on the same page? Ten point eight, dude. I'm about to come across this table. <laughs> that hurts slightly. Does Ooh. it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he's still hurting. Good. I was trying to make him feel good. I'm wounded. <laughs> he wounded. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of the best games. Probably my favorite first person shooter I played this year. Uh, no question about that. Mm. So, you know, take that prey. Wait. Did you play Call of Duty? I did. I, I haven't beaten Call of Duty, but I have played the Did new you one. play multiplayer? Not at all. Remember, I keep like oh joking to you guys. God. I'm like, that I'm going to come in one night and ruin your all KD. <laughs> that's, that's a tough game. It, I've heard, it's, I'm, but it's super fun. I just, uh, you know, I've had a lot to play. And Chris, if, it might, I, if I might shamelessly plug something, oh, you can go to playerwaypodcast.com and read my review of Wolfenstein 2. <gasps> Did there you post one there? Yeah. That's nice. That was like, pretty shameless. That's player, that was unknown that's, and shameless. That's playerwaypodcast.com. Player <laughs> playerwaypodcast.com. Yeah, you were, uh, you were, did you go? Were you, were you there? Did that happen? <laughs> did I go where? Oh, yeah. He also did a thing, folks, if you want to. Uh, <laughs> he was on their little side podcast. If you go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash weekly games chat, you can see a link where uh, John was on there discussing his favorite or what he thinks will win the holiday wars. If you want more content that he did with them, you should add it to Twitter. Yeah. You went and saw your friend BK Black Squits. <laughs> That's Jeez. funny. No, uh, we connected via Audacity, and 
you, you can connect via Audacity. Skype, mother. <laughs> can we move on from this? Yeah, he's good. He's good. It's, I don't. I don't I think it's fine. Do you think it's fine? You better look if you're going to edit it. I'm laughing. I recorded I'm it on Audacity, mother. You definitely got to edit that one, <laughs> right? Thanks, John. All right, I can't wait for the two woohoos. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Hot off the press and straight to your ears. Weekly Games Chat presents the news. 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 Persona 5 sales. Hey. Okay. Persona 5 has sold over 2 million copies worldwide across PS4 and PS3, according to Atlas Twitter's uh, Atlas's Twitter account. Quote. On behalf of everyone here at Atlas USA, we would like to thank everyone for their support. Yeah. This has been an incredible year for our company, one that represents our ambitions for Japanese games in the West. We are in the middle of experiencing tremendous growth both in the West and abroad, and the sales of Persona 5 represent a new level of expectation for fans of the genre. Cool. It's cool, man. Yeah, good for you, <laughs> Persona 5. I think... They're weird. I feel like that's the game that no one's ever finished. Like somebody once yeah. joked online that no, I don't know anybody who's everybody's played like Didn't 120 Tim? hours, but I've never. Yeah, seen, I don't think he finished it. He at the finished time. it. He Tim finished it. Yeah, Tim, I guarantee he finished, he finished it. it two weeks after its release. That's Tim. anecdotal. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can <laughs> probably go see the platinum that he has because that dude has I'll like wait 50 right platinum. Here. Go look it up. Okay. Man. Go look it up. <laughs> I could. Uh, let's see, Jeff Keeley. Love Fest with Kojima continues. It does. Directors Hideo Kojima and Gilmero del Toro will be presenters at the oh Game Awards God. in 2017. I so tried my best. Gilaramo. <laughs> Gilmero. <laughs> Gilmero. <laughs> Jeff Keeley confirms saying, quote, I'm happy to confirm Hideo's attending and will present an award with del Toro on Thursday night. You won't want to miss it. With this news in mind, there is now a good chance we might be seeing a new trailer for Death Stranding. The Game Awards will be this Thursday night, December 7th. That's starting, tomorrow. Yes, starting at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time or 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. UK, you can math it out if you want to stay up and watch <laughs> Or just catch it on the internet. Yeah, I think it'll, it's like available everywhere. So. If you were reading Jeff Keeley's name for the very first time and you never heard of Jeff Keeley, do you think you would say Keeley or Kia Glee? I'd be like Kylie, Jeff Kylie. <laughs> yeah, probably. And if I had never seen that spelling of Jeff because I didn't know our buddy Jeff, I'd be like G of G of <laughs> the. Um, if you followed Keeley's Twitter, he's been. He's been a hundred percent about the game awards. I think it started well, about a month ago. It is. It is his thing. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh, 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 oh! I just got a text message because I parked in the middle of the garage. I'm interested to see. Uh, and my wife just got home and it's raining and she can't get in. Oh, she's pissed. <laughs> I can see like oh. there's probably a thing that says really. Checking his watch. And it came through on the watch, too. Same thing. <laughs> oh, no. I just look forward to the day where Jeff Keighley is, um, moves on to somebody else as far as who he adores and reveres. He's his buddy. it's getting a little gross. Ouch, man. He just can't take any time. He gets one day a year to show his love right. for and why do, Why are you hating on that? Hating on who? Who Keely care? and the uh, Would you Kimo. care if it was Miyamoto and this, he consistently brought right. out Miyamoto every Think year? No, that. Miyamoto is actually a good developer. This goes oh. back to uh, oh, come on, come on, jokes. Five jokes. million. Kojima is a good jokes. developer. Jokes. Jeez. Jokes. It's not jokes. It's, it's not like jokes. A, it's like I said, Alabama sucks or something. Don't oh. you, son of a <laughs> bastard! Do not do Jeez. that. Jeez. <laughs> he just hates us, man. No, I always look forward to the. Uh, no, to the Game Awards. Just like you, you continued the trend from the precedent you set last year. What's that? On the Keeley Kojima love fest that yes. you don't like. Yes. Mm. Let it go, man. Elsa. Just let it go. I can let I can let it go while being humorful. You should try it. if you want to be humorful. Be like funny. Go. You know, it'd be funny. <laughs> Actually, you know, it'd be really funny <laughs> if uh, at the Game Awards Kojima presented the new trailer for Metal Gear Survive. 
<laughs> that would be funny. Uh, anyway. See, because he didn't produce that, that game. That game is going to be amazing. I'm sure John will be 10 out of 10. He's like, a zombie game in Metal Gear? That's a universe I've never been in. Uh, that, but that, That's kind of messed up. Right. <laughs> uh, PUBG's new map. Yeah. It looks pretty cool. Speaking of the Game Awards, guys. The upcoming desert theme map for Player Unknown's Balgram will be featured for the first time next week at the show, or this week. Uh, according to Keeley, quote, don't miss the first ever gameplay of the new desert map from pub, uh, at Pub Battlegrounds live during the Game Awards, Thursday, December 7th. Yeah, everyone's been, uh, it's been talked about forever. We've seen a couple of screenshots, but yeah, it looks really, really people good. have been waiting to see this. And I'm, I think the, the rumor out there is, uh, rumor has it the Xbox One version of, player unknown is coming to early access on december 12th Mm -hmm. and a lot of people think that will also coincide with the day that the desert map at least drops for test servers if not they go ahead and say 1.0 is ready and here it is i don't see how it can't not be 1.0 i don't don't think it's test servers anything i think the entire push for this to come out the debut the debut uh, yeah uh, of (laughs) uh, of the game awards showing this thing in motion is going to be directly go with that it's coming out on the xbox and yeah, available for everybody next tuesday yeah yeah that's a week the, from today the 12th is next tuesday yeah not the game awards they're tomorrow no they're tomorrow but or actually two days are later. we gonna watch them together like on skype we can so we, we can get everything together like are you gonna watch yours on on uh, what what platform are you gonna I use to watch it? Yet. Yet. I don't know if I'm gonna use Mixer on <laughs> Xbox One X Teraflop or if I'm gonna use uh <laughs> YouTube. I'm probably gonna go YouTube. Probably YouTube, to guess. Yeah. Probably YouTube yeah. on my PS4. I'll tell you if they have screw a, Xbox. It'll be what? 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 Derailment? What? If they have a <laughs> option for four K, then that's probably the way it'll go. But otherwise, yeah, it's kind of bobbed a little bit. Yeah, dude. Little 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 natural head bobbage. <laughs> Speaking of head bobs, Poppage. an epic lawsuit. Dun 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 dun. We skipped that one, Sean. No. Dun dun dun. Yeah, dun. I was talking about. Uh, I was pointing. At yeah, we are. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, <laughs> it has been revealed that one of two Fortnite's players that Epic has sued happens to be a 14-year-old boy. Ooh. The mother of the boy sent a letter to court that pushes back against Epic's case. Why are you one, picking on my baby? One claim is that Fortnite's terms require parental consent, which the mother's claim the mother claims was never provided. The mother claimed that by targeting individual players, the pub, ah, the publisher is using a 14-year-old child as a scapegoat. Epic alleges the boy helped design the software. The mother denies the claim. Uh, quote from a statement that Epic provided to Kotaku. This particular lawsuit arose as a result of the defendant filing a DMCA counterclaim to a takedown notice of a YouTube video that exposed and promoted Fortnite's Battle Royale cheats and exploits. Under these circumstances, the law requires that we file suit or drop the claim. Epic is not okay with ongoing cheat, ongoing cheating or copyright infringement from anyone of any age. As stated previously, we take cheating seriously and w- and will pursue all available options to make sure our games are fun, fair, and competitive for players. I have no idea like what he did. If it's it, wait. Right, well, so is it? He made a video of how to cheat. Well, I was I was thinking of like when you cheat on any other game, they just ban your eye. Um, your, yeah, yeah. Your thing, you're done. But is that they like allege, it, it's they alleging he he and some others created the software oh. that allows you to cheat in the game. OK. And the mother practically says, Your Honor, yes, he robbed the bank, but he didn't have my permission. <laughs> it, you that, just is made, a, that is actually a real point, though, because, yeah, if there isn't strong yeah. policing on their part, yeah, they can get screwed on. that. <laughs> well, but you just made me realize it's an entirely different story than the way Chris read it. And, well, I don't uh, know. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> that's, that's a case. Chris reads like Dr. Seuss. <laughs> I try. I try. I do. <laughs> that's, yeah. Mm. PlayStation plus lineup. <laughs> Wouldn't it be more like if I said PlayStation plus lineup is fine up. I don't know. I'm just trying. It's terrible. That's cringeworthy. Yeah, I know. 
That hurt me. I'm going to go get in the car and uh, <laughs> just shout the rest. Yeah. I might just climb on top of the apartments and jump. Keep your hands behind your back and just hey, see what happens. Mike D was asking me about these earlier, and I, I gave him recommendation for this first one. Darksiders 2 Definitive Edition. Because did you ever play this? I did not, but I just told him, I said, you might like it because it, the first Darksiders is very Zelda-like in gameplay. So I was like, you like Zelda. Check it out, at least. <laughs> Plus, he likes deductions. Darks, so, yeah. He deduced. I don't know if he'll play it. Uh, top-notch game of the year right here, folks. Kung Fu Panda Showdown of Legendary Legends. <laughs> Sib- uh Next up, the <laughs> Siberia Collection. Apparently, it's a collection of images from Siberia. <laughs> Uh, X plays lost memories form eight one and corp. And for those who got their, uh, VR ready until dawn, Russia blood. So that's cool. Corp. <laughs> so if I got, if I got a VR from Santa, yes, I could go ahead and download this game for free. Or if you're one of them people that said you can put a two ninety nine charge on my, uh, on my credit card so I can try out this PS VR. That VR? apparently happened last week. Tell us more, Chris. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you don't know. Well, news. <laughs> um, apparently, our news people, you know, they missed this one. Yeah, there's a there was a Such uh, Richard. <laughs> there was a uh, program that PlayStation was doing um, for about. I think they did it for about ten thousand people or so. Basically, if you wanted to try out PSVR, they would mail it to you. You had like fourteen days to try it out. Only stipulation is that you had to put a two hundred ninety nine dollar hold on your card or your bank account. Uh, if you want to keep it, keep it. Charge goes through. It's yours, or else return it. And boom. So what get was your the mind back. controversy? It seemed like you. Oh said no, there was wasn't a con- controversy of it. Well, you kind. said two ninety nine, and I I literally thought three dollars, and I was like, well, how no, can you two hundred ninety nine dollars? Two hundred ninety nine dollars <laughs> and ninety nine cents. That was the only stipulation as far as. Hey, that's go. exactly how and much it, it costs in retail. Yeah. Next week, yeah. Sean will work on shapes. <laughs> 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 Who won? <laughs> Who won Black Friday? Who won? On Cyber Monday, Chris. This just says Black Friday. I Do know. I have a different note? Uh, if I have different notes, I'm right. Well, yeah. to be fair, the the next thing says, here are the top selling games of Black Friday, C- Cyber Monday. So that might be why. Okay. Uh, number one, Wolfenstein. Two, the new Colossus. Nine! Two, Middle Earth, Shadow of War. Three, The Evil Within. Two, four, Dishonored. Two, five, Prey. Nine! Six. That doesn't fit. Six, South Park, The Fractured But Horror. Seven, Destiny 2. Eight, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Nine! <laughs> Nine, <laughs> Call of Duty World War Two. I mean, Eight. that was, I was about to no, say. No, we set up the nine, so when you said nine. Oh, okay. Uh, and then uh, ten, Assassin's Creed Origins. So, uh, yeah, all of those were on sale on Black Friday. So that's one, two, three, four. You know four why Star Wars from old Bethesda on that? You know one. why Star Wars is not on those lists? Because they did not go on sale on Black Friday. They did not. I went on VG charts to find out how many s- copies were sold for Prey. Uh-huh. I was sad. <laughs> it's pretty bad, and it? it's terrible. They John. didn't hit a million. No. It was like 500. Well, that's, that was the news earlier this year. It was like, yeah, they'd only sold like 500,000 of the game, and that was pretty bad. So hopefully this brought it up 2 million. <laughs> a little bit, units. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder if this says like a lot about what they're making, like where people, it might at least explain like EA's rational uh, rationalization as to why they are moving away from the single player because it's like, wait a minute. Okay, Wolfenstein 2 is a single player game. That's a great game. Everyone gave it great reviews. Everyone said it was great. They say it was it's huge. in the 80s on it's Metacritic, one, Chris. It's like 89. That's it's huge. Fair enough. That's huge. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and no one bought it on opening day. As we said, it was in the top 10 last month. And then the same happened with Evil Within 2. Desire 2, of course, didn't have a great premiere last fall. Prey, as John said for, <laughs> was pretty abysmal. Uh, and now all of a sudden they're in the top 10 because... This isn't top I mean, 10. No, this was top 10 for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Right, but we don't know if it's top 10 for November yet. Sure, sure, fair point. But it's like, you think on those days... I know Wolfenstein was 30 bucks that day. Yeah. Um, I have to think that Dishonored 2, probably you could get somewhere between 15 and 20. Yeah, I scooped up Prey for 20 bucks on Xbox uh, yeah. Live. You know, <laughs> and that's, I mean, so that's great. They're getting sales. It's an amazing game. Shut but, up. Yeah. You already owned it one time. Why buy I, it again? I traded it I traded it in knowing that I was going to get it at some point at a discount. Yeah. Okay. I traded it in. Hit Bob get, him. Hit no, Bob that, him that, now. That, that's dumb. 
There, you just got hit by by John. <laughs> <laughs> what, Mister Trade In? But yeah, I trade them in with the intent of I played it. It's, it's done. I don't want to get it again. That's because yeah, you're not so. sentimental in Except any way, Mac. shape, or form. Except That's for why Mac. I'm your sixth best friend. Three weeks ago, you were. Hey, I still haven't seen Knack 2 on any of these lists. You um, still haven't told me what my ranking is now. It's not out yet. The committee's still meeting. <laughs> Was it? Man, the playoff committee's already put their stuff out. They had a night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, it, as nice as it is to see these games on here, it kind of speaks to a problem that's going to at least seems like on the surface, depending on how well they're budgeting. I don't know. I don't know how bad that, but that stuff runs their business. And what is that problem? Yeah, the problem you that to? these games aren't selling for 60. They're selling for 30. They're but selling why for is 20. That? I think it was money. for timing. I really think it was timing. I think people knew Black Friday was coming up. Not necessarily for Prey, yeah, but, but for like Wolfenstein. Mm-hmm. I knew people that said, I'm going to wait for Black Friday to get it. I just don't want to buy it. But have you ever thought that for, say, like GTA Five? But are you saying this because they're single player experiences? Is that what you're getting part, at? In part, maybe, yeah, but it might also, I mean, that's not true for everyone, obviously, because like South Park was in the top 10. They were number four, uh, and that's a single player, 13 hour experience. You wonder if it's just one, the way they're marketing these things and two, what the demand is like where someone's like, I want to play that, but I want to play that for 60 bucks, which if that's the case, that's a problem, right? You know, that, that that's a problem for them that they're going to have to figure out. You know out. what's crazy? So you're it's, saying it's a problem for Bethesda. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It not, is. Yeah. It's crazy that Zelda's on this list because I don't think it was on sale. No. Because I sense. remember Mario, nothing for Nintendo was on sale. I don't think. Except for no. like accessories, controllers, and things of that nature. Yes. So that that is actually, well, now that I look at it, quite mind-blowing. Well, reportedly... The Switch was the winner of Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Though I've seen some dispute. Uh, it of course. appears die. <laughs> that Nintendo <laughs> Switch was extremely popular during the Thanksgiving weekend. It's important to note the Switch was available at full retail price, while Xbox and PlayStation have been heavily discounted bundles on sale. According to an analyst, quote, even we had not expected such a record-breaking streak. The strong sale is going to create a robust install install base, which is where game software will monetize over the next five to seven years. Nintendo stock was up 88.5% for the year, currently trading at 414.50. But they did do very, very well. So what sites are you seeing that are disputing that Well, I looked at the one thing that I was like, huh, that didn't add up to me. I looked at Amazon's top selling things for the week. And it was like number twelve on there for for like the cyber week stuff. Like number number one of all thing, of course. Your for them. your big comeback was that Amazon, the most popular retailer in the world. Yeah, yes. but, but Black, what, what Black was the most Friday. popular deal on cyber? Yeah. Uh, on theirs of uh, in gaming in general yeah. was a thirty nine dollar PlayStation uh, Plus membership for the year. That's oh, yeah. the I most. got one of those. Was, Their number was a PlayStation or an Xbox. The number that. yes one the number three on the list of. Things, all things, right? Was uh, the Xbox One S, which of all things, of all, all things, things for video gaming. game, yeah, all okay. things video game. Uh, so that was like the one thing I'm like, huh? I don't doubt that it could have been the best selling on Black Friday itself <laughs> or Cyber Monday. Yeah, I don't do. know if it's saying the whole week because remember these sales started last Friday. No, it's Black Friday, through. Cyber Monday. It's, it's claiming that little Friday to Monday. Yeah, I don't know if they're talking about the week before, which is when all these sales mainly started. For it, I think it sold good because yeah. it was available. That is true, but I don't know. Does that, I'll does that say make this. sense? <laughs> if it is true, the one who should be concerned is Microsoft because Microsoft has generally been the one winning on Black Friday. Yeah, Sony has been winning the holiday season. Black Friday has generally been, been Microsoft's Microsoft, thing. Yeah. So if Microsoft, who discounted their console the most, can't win... On that, that means one of two things to me. Either one, people aren't paying attention to Microsoft as far as the Xbox One S is concerned. Or two, it means to me that people, if they're thinking about buying an Xbox One, are only looking at the X now. Which means yeah. if you see something for $500 and then I look over here and I see a $300 system did, did that we- has two amazing games on it. I'm probably going to buy the two amazing games that, you know, did, anyone did, could play. Did we say the same thing last year concerning the Pro? I can't remember, uh, but I feel was, like... We, no one was talking about the Pro last year. I know, but I feel like at some point we talked about that. We were wondering if the PS4, like, regular sales would be hurt because of the Pro. And I, Yeah. Did, am I making this up? Does that feel familiar at all? <laughs> 
But I mean, what, what I think will happen is it'll all balance out. True. So are you, <laughs> so are you not at the point yet where you concede that Switch will win the holiday? I don't know. I won't ever rule out PlayStation because I yeah. thought last year that Xbox was going to take it, and then all of a sudden it's like, by the way, everyone buys a PlayStation. Apparently, um, yeah. I think if someone said take your money for the holiday, I would vote PlayStation just because of price. Still and, at this point, yeah, just because. I mean, even when Black Friday, they're going into Black Friday, not getting a deal on the Switch, but they're buying it. Sure, like not underselling the concept of high demand. Sure, I mean. Like I said, every year I've watched PlayStation not sell as well as Xbox, despite having near the same deal. I mean, it was Are the you same. Sure, PlayStation didn't win the holiday last year. No, they they, did not. Me tell you, I Hold think on. the Switch is doing Xbox good. Xbox One S won one of the months. No, I'm yeah. saying but Xbox didn't... won Black Friday last year. They've been winning Black Friday like oh, oh every okay. year. You're just and saying then, yes. Black Friday, and then Sony always ends up winning the holiday. Okay. And like even here, like you heard Sony the other day, they said they had their most successful Black Friday ever. Um, so to me, that says like, well, if that's the case. Does that mean then they're still in route to have their most successful holiday ever? And it seems to me that as the console becomes more accessible and the fact that it's been the most popular console, I think, you know, easily this generation might end up being one of the most popular of all time when we're all said and done. You're talking about people now can buy a PlayStation 4 for $199 in today's day and age. Man, that's. To me, that means like a lot of people that have been waiting, they're going to go buy this thing finally. You know, maybe not the the hardcore like us. We're not that or even the mid tier people. But it's like the kind of people who (laughs) we're talking like at this point to me, um, how we used to always see 20 million people bought a freaking PS2 in like 2005 or something like that. You know, and you're like, how? This doesn't make sense. Why would that be selling? And it's simply because there's a lot of great games on PlayStation and it was a very accessible, popular console and people wanted to pick it up. I, I well, think do you want to go over me. No, go ahead. Okay, I just think that it's it's the first holiday that Switch was available. That also I, I think PlayStation and Xbox were that this is they've been around for a little while now. For there's, sure. And when you have and, and I was about to allude to that point, yeah. it's not like the Switch is winning and putting up to the two other consoles to shame yeah, yeah, because yeah. and and it's also the reason I think the switch is going to win this holiday you have to remember that almost 70 million people already have these machines sure if not more so yeah they're dropping them at a price and one could say on its surface you can't resist that price but the people who can't resist that price mm-hmm. are one to every five people or who are demanding a switch yeah. The Switch bundles were kind of cool. They were three forty nine, and you were actually getting a carrying case with a game mm-hmm. uh, and the console. So, I mean, it. I don't know how many of those sold versus just the regular two ninety nine editions. Sure, um, but it's crazy that nothing was on sale and people bought it. I did not expect that at all. If there was anything standing in that I thought would be standing in the Switch's way of winning the holiday, it would be supply. Yeah, yeah, that's been that's that would still also be my big thing yeah, too. Apparently, Dude, that's not been. I can't go into yet. a store and not find one now. Hmm. Let's go right now. And the only reason I haven't purchased one yet is because I want to find the uh, the blue and red combo. What the, a switch? Yeah, I don't want to get the 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 black s- for Tinley because she switch. likes. You don't need a switch. Well, people may it's have a them. family device, Sean. Well, you may just buy. <laughs> hey, Tinley, I bought you a uh, dock for your room. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> That's a, I'm willing to bet regardless this year when we look at the holidays uh, for everyone, sales will be up is my prediction. For That's everyone. Uh, for every, yeah, just for the industry as a whole, software I bet will be up big time. Um, and that's pretty good because I think actually pretty this good. That's pretty good. I think this lineup of games this holiday season, in theory, like it, while I think it's a better lineup than last year, I think the names were bigger last year too you know so that there was a lot more out there to generate stuff zelda mario uh, sales i don't zelda know what he, no i'm not talking about saying. that's not yeah. a holiday thing that's those games have been out the only one that hasn't has been mario but like to me the only big ones this year like huge name wise were mario uh call of duty world world war and star wars battlefront those were the three whereas like last year i don't think that's on the same level as i mean like i'm talking like real premium level 
stuff. Uh, that, that next that, level. That elite next level. Yeah, Assassin's next level. Creed is outselling Mario. Yes, on I mean, three so- consoles. Without And to be fair, those uh, numbers did not include digital sales for Mario. Bob your head. There you go. There it is. <laughs> Anyways, breakfast to anyone. Say it better. Breakfast to anyone? <laughs> there you go. I, I felt that a little better. I'm going to get some. I'll tell you that much. Ooh. I'm hungry. Nintendo has confirmed that it's collaborating with Kellogg for Super Mario Cereal. The item will be available on December 11th. It has also confirmed the box will double as an Amiibo. This will allow (laughs) players to tap the limited edition box on their Nintendo Switch and receive gold coins or a heart and Super Mario Odyssey. How cool is that? How many websites do you think will reveal the cereal? It's totally level seven for sure. Did anyone ever eat those, uh, the Zelda and Mario cereal from, I think, I think I did. Yeah, it was pretty terrible for me. But it was it with Kellogg's. I don't think it was Kellogg's. No, I think it was just like I can't remember. I mean, that was six. So yeah, we, we don't want to throw out some some weird. But I just Kellogg's, remember you had the you had the divide down the middle, yeah. and you had the Zelda side and, and you the, had the Mario side. Look, it's going to be I couldn't tell a difference. It's going to be puffed sugary cereal. <laughs> yeah, from yeah. Kellogg's, it'll be fine. John will buy fifteen and open. He's not going to open. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I got to sell them later. Somebody's going to win them. Probably. <laughs> uh, PSX twenty seventeen. We're getting a glimpse of the lineup for the upcoming PlayStation experience. The cast and crew of The Last of Us Part Two will be on hand Saturday, December 9th at 6.30 to talk about the making of the most recent trailer. Sucker Punch will also be talking about the upcoming Ghost of Toshima in a panel moderated by Brian Altano. Media Mo- Molecule is hosting a panel on the development of Dreams. This gives fans plenty to look forward to. I didn't realize that dreams still had not come out (laughs) or that they were still making dreams. They are man. Poor me. Media meal molecule. Yeah. Media. Me. 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 (laughs) Is this, I gotta check. This is okay. Or no, no, it's not. This one's not bolted. Okay. I almost shot my, uh, finally load a little bit prematurely. Yeah. Because the, the final finally is not boldened. Yeah. New staff. Step up your, Editing. (laughs) He's like... uh, But anyways, December updates for Assassin's Creed Origins. AC Origins is getting new modes, enemy scaling, and more. Ubisoft has announced that Assassin's Creed will receive an update this month, adding a horde mode, an increased difficulty setting, enemy scaling, and a few new quests for the game. New event quests will be added called Here Comes a New Challenger, pitting players against endless waves of enemies in the serene arena. Nightmare mode is being added as a new difficulty setting, making enemies much more dangerous. Scaling will also be added to the game, allowing enemies to remain challenging across the map as a balance to your level increases. I think I also saw there was a hint. They haven't confirmed it yet, but there seems to be a hint they will be adding chocobos to the game uh, because they have a a partnership with Square Enix. Um, What's a chocobo? Exactly. It's a it's kind of like an ostrich type bird that is in Final Fantasy. No, no, no. It's I, I said kind of like That's three this time. Um, <laughs> but you, you get on it, and it's a it's a really it's a transport. It, it can go fast. In some of the Final Fantasies, you actually have chocobo races. Um, they bear have man. They bear had chocobo races if they had these chocobos. But you, you mount them like a horse, and and they're awesome. They are awesome. Certain music cues up when you get on they, it. It's uh, really epic. It's they legit. had a cross thing with Final Fantasy 15. Like they had it where you could eventually get um, an assassin's outfit for Noctis in the in that game. So I think, likewise, coming back over now, they're putting this in here. Makes sense, and it uh, it's a video game. <laughs> That's <laughs> the way I view it. I don't care. Uh, I do like that they had a nightmare mode and didn't charge people for it. They just put it in there. Just said, here it is. You still playing this game? I am. Uh, I'm playing something else that uh, hopefully we'll talk about next week or the week after. One of these weeks. But uh, in between every now and then, I get to look at a fleeting glimpse of, of Egypt and I go back. When does every between every now and then happen? What like is the Saturday exact? morning for about 20, 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. uh, we don't have that many more uh, recording days before the super duper epic Christmas music gaming spectacular part two. Now you're just making promises Three. that you stop have Just no business again, making. We're recording 
This is official. You shouldn't yank at my headphones. See how see how that feels? It doesn't it doesn't feel Father, good. Does, I work with children. <laughs> Why did you do that? I don't know. <laughs> what did you do that for? Finally this week. <laughs> Finally this week. Mm. Oh. <laughs> really? Finally this week. Really? Oh. I brought it back. <laughs> Finally this week. <clears throat> Bungie. <laughs> Sorry. As it uh, stated that it has been reading and taking the heart feedback on improving the experience of Destiny 2 as well as the tough criticism about their lack of communication. Quote, we agree we need to be more open. We want Destiny to be a game that fits in your life. Bungie has outlined the future improvements for both the December 5th and December 12th update, showing off things such as masterwork weapons. These what we- these legendary weapons have been upgraded. This is part of a four-tier effort by Bungie to improve Destiny 2 experience, uh, Destiny 2's experience including better rewards for advanced players, more control over rewards, making shards useful, and providing, quote, general quality fixes wherever possible. Yeah, they've, uh, I, I, you know, I don't, I haven't touched this game, so, (laughs) but I can tell you this, I've seen everywhere, it feels like over the last seven days, just apparently Destiny is having some problems with its community. I'll tell you this. All right. This is, this is completely, it's possibly anecdotal. Okay, John? anecdotal alert um the game as, as you listen to my voice right now the game this december 5th patch is already out yeah. there it's osiris and but well, we record on mondays i said as, you dummy i said as they listen oh. to this it's it's out <laughs> chris is a dummy <laughs> he's so dumb <laughs> um so i'm on skype with friend of the show ryan leaf mike and uh he Worst purchases, of all time he purchases it and he he's not too impressed with it Really, I I can't speak from my own playing because I I don't plan on getting it yet. Yeah, uh, he seemed to he seemed to elaborate that it was more of the same. He was excited that the uh, a piece of armor he got it made him notice that the light level had gone up, so they had raised that cap a little bit. Yeah, that's more of the same though. Yeah, right. but he said that, but that was the most excited he got. So I don't know. Yeah. Now we were on Skype for maybe an hour. He played for maybe about that long. So this was. 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., right? No. I don't know what you're talking about, Chris. Uh, <laughs> this was on Skype on a random time on a random day. It was obviously on a Saturday. Possibly. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I know that the crew I, that I play a lot of my online games with, they're excited about this patch. Yeah, today, but they're but homers. They are. They're they are like they're the diehard. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been reading that. Like I read a guy kind of wrote a very honest and brutal um brutal like you know uh, opinion piece where he was <laughs> he was out, just buddy. he was just basically coming through and he's like look i love destiny one like yeah. that is one of my favorite games of the last couple of years but he's like I, i'll be honest the magic hasn't quite been there for me this time and and i think that goes against the buzz i hear about destiny 2 yeah, destiny 2 well, destiny 2 has improved in almost every way I, not that i don't respect no, no, the yeah. opinion i, uh, I think i, 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 I don't get that like in the sense of like yes from the release of the game those things but there was this thing of like where even though destiny when it came out had issues there was a group of people that like they came in and they were committed to this thing and they wrote out as destiny or as Bungie fix these things and kind of add better quality of life to the game. But at the same time, there always seemed to be an alert to keep them going. Like, and even here, Sean, like I watched Sean put down and say, I am done with this game. And then just as quickly come back and disappear for three months and play it. Yeah. Uh, back and forth again. Yeah. I don't know if, uh, time will tell and you just don't know, but this might be one of those periods kind of akin to how wow was a couple of years ago where it's like, this expansion seems great at first, and then all of a sudden you go, I don't know if I'm enjoying this as much well, as last time. I like time. that you brought up WoW because in any kind of sustained online game, yeah. there's going to be a community of haters. And, sure, and sure. you have to embrace that. And sometimes the haters are actually being very truthful, mm-hmm. and the things they are saying are very factual about the game and how it yeah, operates. Yeah, Taylor Swift. Uh, I don't I – don't, what happened? She always she talks so, about those haters. She's so, she's so hot. She is. Haters gonna hate, okay? Yeah. Let's just so put what's, that out there. What's hate, the, hate, hate. To the layman like me, what's the problem with the game? I think it's like the big thing I've been reading is it feels a lot more the same as, as you said. No, like, no, no, no. no. no that's, that's, that's a problem. Okay. But yeah. what what is Bungie specifically addressing? We've heard you, this and this. Because when I, when I looked at it, I thought, okay, this is sort of a tacked on, same old with. 
I think, EA's loot boxes. Like they're doing something that the fans don't like. Yeah, I think it's again that that feeling you're buying you these know. up from what I've gathered, <laughs> and this is just from afar. Uh, you're you're going out there and you're purchase being asked to purchase these expansions, and you just don't feel like you're really getting much anything different than what was already there. And it's just feeling like, here's a couple of hours. Enjoy this. You're going to grind it, and you're going to keep playing until you get all the guns you want. Uh, and then you're either just going to keep playing because you really love this grind, or you're going to be like our friends, and you're going to go play something else until the next thing drops, and you're going to play that for a couple of weeks instead of feeling like, okay, this event happened, and then this new expansion came out, and it completely felt fresh. And I, I went off, and I had a new experience I hadn't been having in Destiny for a while. They brought something back I wasn't, you know, that hadn't been like, there. Like, it, for example, when the raid finally dropped in Destiny 2, that was, it felt new, it felt fresh, it felt great. Yeah. But it got to a point where you're like, okay, well, we're kind of done playing right now. Let's wait for the expansion. Let's see what it brings. There was the... the anticipation of something really mind blowing um but as it comes out I, I i just know from my first impression it just seems like it's kind of the same the same formula of the last time destiny released their second expansion to a game and it's just it's just kind of me i don't want it to be me because i like destiny i, I loved playing destiny 2 from the launch everyone wants that taking king expansion now. yeah that's what they want and i think because they're not always getting it they're ticked off. It's like you're asking us to spend more money. But as as a as a developer, man, Bungie they care. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I told you back back when Destiny Two launched. I told you guys about the the video that they had out of the staff watching that first um, group beat the raid. That is awesome, you know. For sure. So they're always going to do their best to make that game good. Good luck to uh, eliminating the haters because like I said they're out there they'll always be and and as of right now I don't have plans to play it anytime soon but if I do I will update this fine pod Ooh. fine podcast I almost bought it on sale what Destiny 2? Yeah, yeah it was on sale during Cyber Week there but I did not I did not but alright ready to do some emails? email too that, soon that's not what you say Chris oh let's wrap this up never Electronic mail. Emails. Letters from the future. <laughs> <laughs> Justin from OKC. Hello, AKA Justin. AKA now sudden enemy of John. Why? I'm just going to guess he's a Sooners fan. I don't know if that's true or not. I can't remember. Oh, I don't, you never know. Yeah, that's he, true. He could be a he Cowboys could, fan. He could be a Paul George fan. Possibly. Yeah. Probably uh, not a Carmelo fan. Probably not, but he could. He's probably out of the... The other one you didn't mention, a Westbrook friend. Who, friend. Who's that guy? A Westbrook friend, a fan. <laughs> he says, hey, bastards. Saying, hey, dude's voice. <laughs> hey, bastard. <laughs> uh, with the vision conversation you had last week, I want to ask a bigger question. Are video games art? Furthermore, what is art? Oh, no. <laughs> and then he says, boomer sooner. Oh, there right. it is. Well, there you go. Thanks, dude. Mean bastards. <laughs> uh, no problem, uh, bastard from Oklahoma. Uh, the Sooners, I'm going to go ahead and touch. I think they're going to be troubled to, to Georgia in that first game. I just can't get on board either way. Because I'm just saying the way, ba- by them. the way Baker Mayfield is playing. He looks like a god. Top notch. Tap notch. Tap notch. He's, a, he's probably the most like Cam Newton slash Tim Tebow. Like You're just like, that guy's going to will something. I'm thinking more of Manziel in his prime. Don't ever compare Dude, him to Johnny. Johnny football yeah. did work. You and, can acknowledge and then it, he or go, you could not. Apparently, then he would go to a bar. And then and he, he got rich and famous, yeah. and it all fell apart. <laughs> and now he listens to a podcast about video games. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> From Canada. <laughs> but um, I think that can be art. Uh, that was a clear troll email, Chris. We do not need to address anything else. Sure. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I think they can be art, for sure. Was video tr- games can be art. Was he trolling sure. us, really? He was like, I want to ask a bigger question. Are video games art? For the more, what is art? That's the part he's troll- yeah. trolling us. <laughs> I, that doesn't read like a troll to me. Well, if, do you remember us talking last week about art and all that stuff? 
Yeah, yeah. remember like where you... Do you remember our, our entire vision thing that we no, had? No, we talked yeah. primarily about vision. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember, you remember the, the controversy that happened? We didn't really discuss art. I'm just saying. All right, Joe, you know what, John? Let's let's answer his question for real. Let's put no, our for no, real no, hats let, on. Let's move no, on, and no. we'll get hate mail next week. For okay. real hats. Let's do it. Answer the question. Because now I'm you fired get, up. You get one word. is video game art. Sure. Okay. Indeed. Yes. There you go. Answered. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, next up, this person asked that I not hey, say their name. Hey, thanks for the email. Okay, don't say their name then. Yeah. He said, could you please not Wait, say my who? name? who? Was it he? I don't know if it's a he that or not. That narrows it down. Yeah, I will say this. His, uh, 50, his, 50. his email does have a Hollow Knight logo on it. That's a good Stop. game. Stop. <laughs> you guys should play that. What is it? Hollow Knight. I think oh. it's coming to Switch at some point. Oh, well, then I'm You will like it. it. It's up your alley. What is it, Metroid Benny? For the yes. record, he's pointing to John. Hollow Knight. <laughs> you? Hell no. Not so much. Yeah. But he says, hey, Chris, Sean, and John. What's Man, up? you misspelled two of those names. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. We forgive you. Uh, I've listened to the show for several weeks now, and I went back to the archives and listened to your review of Dark Souls 3. As a big fan of the series with nearly 500 hours combined, I want to know Whoa. if you did finish the game in your opinion. If you have not finished it, do you think you ever will? If you will, you should look for the hints and tips instead of just looking up a full guide. Just I the agree. tips. Just the tips. Uh, because Best when you know ever. exactly what's coming, it's not as much fun. Also, I was wondering what changes <laughs> you think they can make to Battlefront 2 to make the system of progression more fun and not so pay to win but still have a good way for the developer to make money. Um, as far as Dark Souls 3, I have not. I, I've been looking a couple times now. The core version of the game has been on sale, but I don't want that. I want the one that is uh, includes all the DLC, the like game of the year one, because yeah. if I go back to this, I want to be able to see everything. Um, yeah. Those games, to me, they're not to me. I don't play those games for the story. Per se, I play them for the experiences. For the challenge, would you yeah, say? Yeah, and challenges. And yeah. honestly, what happens with this show is something else comes out and I move on and I come back to it and I'm like, I suck now because I haven't been practicing this for <laughs> 20, 30 hours. And I don't remember everything going on in this, but uh, I always enjoy them. Um, and at some point, I'm, I may get it again if I have a, a downtime. Well, dude, he who must not be named or she who must not be named put 500 hours in it. That's legit. For for real, the uh, the hat that I don't I'm have calling on, him Hollow Knight. The hat that I don't have on has now tipped to you. Tipping him. Speaking of tip the of Souls the games, uh, yeah. never mind. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, that as was far a as teeter, <laughs> teetered out. Demon Souls, Demon Souls. Oh they yeah, the original. Announced, they announced that the uh, online services for Demon Souls is going offline, and Rest. Demon Souls is the spiritual prequel to yes. the Dark Souls series. Fun fact: alert. played that game for about. Half an hour <laughs> when it came out, and I said nope and moved on. Um, as far as like, the battlefront stuff, um, strip out all the stuff, <laughs> really start over. We we address some of the things that they probably should do. Be more like a Call of Duty per se. Yeah. Just have a have a system that allows you simply to get new guns simply by leveling up. Yeah, over time, let them unlock, and then have attachments that as you play and you do good with those weapons you get rewarded and get new attachments i mean i think that's a tried and true i, I, li I like the, i like the, the 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 gun aspect to yeah. always be a level up mm -hmm. um the cosmetic part i don't care how much money you put on cosmetics or make me want to buy or or put out there for me to buy because it doesn't affect the overall my sure. character so if, if they if they found a balance in that i'd be very happy the only other thing i can think of is uh for them to do something kind of like how halo 5 does where you have default weapons that everyone has to use, right? And then as you level and you play games, you get currency and you buy loot boxes that therefore give you little packs of like customization of as far as what weapons you can use in the match. So if you want to use like the battle rifle, you have to turn in a card and for that playthrough until oh, you I die. I don't like that. It actually works well because they give you so much. Yeah. You don't ever feel like you're running out. But later on, like, there are also like weapon or vehicles and stuff that you can't use until you've hit certain thresholds yeah. that you have the cards for. Yeah. So you always feel like you have those, but it's cool. Like when you get the rare ones and you all of a sudden see this epic warthog come out that you're like, we need to deal with that right now, guys, you know? So as long as I can get balancing, that could be a cool other system and it would allow them to still have the loot crates uh, and call spend of, money. Call of duty does something. I opened a, a crate today 
and it, oh, I've done it before, but I just re- it reminded me you can you can get a crate that drops, and then you can actually get an epic gun uh, that you can use in game, and it's the same gun that you already have unlocked, but it's an epic version of it. Yeah, so it gives you like maybe ten percent bonus XP when you use it, or something like that. Okay, as long as it's like that, not like you get ten percent more damage. No, no, never any additional <laughs> damage that I've seen. So well, that's cool, so, it, 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 dude. You have Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Like just just put Battlefield, and then make it Star Wars. <laughs> That's funny. That's really all they should That's do. That's all they need to do. It, I don't know why they don't. I do would that. never not play that game. Yeah, I don't know. Thanks for the email, though. Well, I'm real. actually I've actually been hired to uh, write the new Star Wars um, game <clears throat> since I since it's <laughs> since it now doesn't take that much. So. Ouch! Dang, that was a shot at. I would niche. love to see you actually play online against me, one v one me, bro. I like to see you script a. I got I got Splatoon. I like to see you make a <laughs> game that's uh, that's Star Wars canon and approved by Lucas Arts. Let's see you do that. Mitch did that. I've already got it. Okay. A bounty hunter has been assigned to assassinate Palpatine, and he uh, goes through all the the things, goes through all the areas, shame. and then at the moment he actually reaches the Death Star and witnesses from afar the death of Darth Vader. Uh, okay. Hits it right up to that point. I wish Pretty, I could tell I people. That game. You want to play that game? I do want to play that game. Yeah. By the way, uh, I wish I could read this next email's uh, like actual email address because it's pretty good. I will tell it to you off, <laughs> All off right. air. All right. But uh, Greg from West Virginia writes in and says, Hello, Sean, John, and Chris. What's up, buddy? I'll say this. He came close to your spelling. He decided to go with the old crisscross route for Chris. <laughs> and that is K-R-I-S? Yeah, Chris so Cross. Not, or Chris, uh, what you call it, from the Cubs? Low. He went K R I S S. Daddy Ooh, Mac will make yeah. you jump, jump. 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 Chris Cross will make you jump, jump. <laughs> uh-huh, John remembers uh-huh. what he was doing in fifth grade. Uh, he says, I intentionally spelled all your names wrong because none of the listeners ever get them spelled correctly. That's so oh, funny man. that he almost got mine right. Actually, you know what's funny? What? You got, no, Greg, you got John right. J O N. John. <laughs> Anywho, I cast the references to Opie and Anthony and was wondering if any of you keep up with their current projects. Jim and Sam show, Artie and Anthony, Chip and Chip or Chip Chip Chipperson podcast. Chip, Chip, uh, Chipperson. Now I'm going to go baby bird Sandy Kane oh my while smashing her guitar on Bobo's privates during the up and down this is great. game while Patrick O'Neill watches and offers universal insight. Patrice, Patrice, Patrice O'Neill, Patrice, O'Neil, dude. Oh, Patrice O'Neill, yeah, I'm sorry. Patrick right O'Neill. You're fired, You're fired dude. <laughs> well, Shaquille O'Neal watches and offers universal <laughs> insight that makes me rethink their entire existence and all for a meager 100 grand uh, candy bar. Your mom's box, Greg from West the, uh, That was poetry. Right? Dude, first of all, I'm, I am not a huge OP and Anthony. I, I, everything he said, I know because I lived the OP and Anthony radio life for many, many years. I do keep up with what everybody's doing. It's actually kind of sad to me because of how far away they are now. So far um, away. OP needs to get a radio show and quit fishing and, and doing pop up shows with the Mad Cuban, uh, Jim and Sam. Eh, I just don't, I don't like them. I don't like them without. I don't like Jim without Opie and Anthony. Uh, Anthony, everybody just likes because he's Anthony. And they're already Lang is with him now. <laughs> so that makes the, sense. And it, everybody's like, when is that train wreck going to happen? Because Artie's just a... He likes to drink. He do and, things. And do things, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, great references. You you went to my number one, speaking of my ranking system, number one fan right there. Number one email of all time for me because of how much love I have for that radio program. Ouch. He's welling up, ladies Take and gentlemen. <laughs> welling up. Well, next up, Chase writes in, at least I'm guessing that's his name. Uh, he says, the title of this email was, hey, uh, hey guys, found y'all a sponsor, LOL. I think that means he's not serious. What do you think? <laughs> Let's find uh, out. Hey, I think this company desperate. might like you guys. Oh, Anyways, my God. You should see this. He says, yeah, Josh. he says, hey, I think this company <laughs> might like you guys. He sent us a picture, ladies and gentlemen, of Richard's. Bodine, a pork and rice product, looks to be some sort of uh, sausage made of pork <laughs> from Richards. Uh, it says it's great on the grill. <laughs> I bet it is. Uh, is that slang for something? Right. <laughs> he says, anyways, what's your guys' thoughts on doing a reminisce episode? Older games that y'all loved and still play from time to time? Or maybe one that you would like to see a remake of. Uh, Legacy of Kane series is what I'd love to see in modern remaster in HD. Um, I would be with you on that. Uh, the game was way ahead of its time, in my opinion. And it only had the initial load time. So once you were in the game, you could start 
uh, play start to finish without any more loading. Super cool for its era. Plus, the storytelling was awesome. Also, one more thing, DLC. I believe in support, the games, uh, the game developers with money, or, okay, also, one more thing about DLC. I believe to support the game developers with money, but I feel like we should get a full game at the initial purchase. $60, $80, whatever, I don't mind paying, but I want a complete game. DLC should be just that. Additional content to complement a full, complete game that I just don't feel we get many times. Microtransactions are a hot topic now, and I think Blizzard handles it well. Keep it to cosmetics and stay away from play to win. The game time tokens and WoW have also worked well. I love gaming and the de- and the developers that give us the games we want to play, and we have to have both sides to thrive. Uh, but I feel they are pushing people away with current models. The public outcry is there. How can it be resolved in a manner that is beneficial to both sides? Anyways, love the show and have a good one, fellas. Bunch of Richards. Black Fella. <laughs> well, thank you, uh, Richard, uh, for that. I love that picture. I may actually use it and put it on Twitter. Right. That's pretty awesome. Um, he hit the nail on the head, man. Blizzard does it to where it's cosmetic and not pay to pay to pay to play or whatever it's called. For sure. You know? Um, I'd say this. If you want a reminisce episode, our hundredth episode, we reminisce about our top five games each of all time, I believe. Yeah. Favorite, personal. Uh, and so. I, I'll say it again. I don't really, with the newer generation stuff, uh, I don't really go back and play older games. I, I stopped oh, around. Yeah, we demonstrated that about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> what, what does that mean, John? Ouch. John, what does that mean? You trade games in, you just, you're done with them. Exactly, except for now. You trade friends in and you're done with them. This um, is not true. Friends evolve. They're here for certain reasons and for certain times. I am almost <laughs> certain, by the way. Uh, it's funny he brought up Legacy of Kane. I believe... That is a Amy Henning game, if I recall. It doesn't matter. But uh, for those who, for those who are wondering and have not listened to John try to downplay her career, uh, <laughs> she's also the creator of Uncharted. I think so. they should redo a Tomb Raider game. And <laughs> they did that. Remaster Halo. <laughs> did that. <laughs> and maybe like make Wind Waker HD. They've done that. <laughs> One of my dreams came true. Or With what? May come, may come true. It's been rumored that Assassin's Creed Rogue is being remastered for current gen consoles. Which one was that? That side scroller? Was, uh, no. Assassin's Creed Rogue came out simultaneously with Unity. Yeah. Oh. For you can get for, for free, the, I think, right now. The yeah, PSP? For, the place, for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Oh, I'm, I'm just throwing out things that weren't true at all. <laughs> what was the... the, the you play as a Templar. China? You was play it? as a Templar in this Was game. that the one yeah. that was a side-scroller? China, India, and Russia. Russia. I have all Russia. three. <laughs> I have all three. <laughs> but to his... But to his um, ah, never mind. We'll stretch out the podcast even okay. further. Ooh. Oh, a little bit oh. of girth action you would have had on there. there. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I mean, I'm not down with his, his, his opinion on a game is complete, you know, and you don't think that, that you should get a game. No, I think what he's more so saying was he wants a game that feels complete when you get, it. he doesn't want to feel like, Hey, I got this and now I got to pay for this part to get this thing. Like, like for instance, like I said, Witcher 3 is a great example. No one came away walking out of that game when the initial game came out going like, they didn't do enough, you know? And then when they released the DLC, they happily paid for it because they didn't feel like they were just being nickel and dime. They felt like they were getting yeah, a substantial well, return for I their money. I think what he's saying is sometimes you feel like you're getting nickel and dimed for an experience that was not a complete feeling type experience from the beginning. I'll give you well, a... He did, but he, that may be what he's saying. Yeah. But he did say, just give me skins. That's what he said. Oh, well, that's loot boxes he's talking yeah. about there. That's a different there were thing. There several points that he made. Yeah. Right. Um, should have listened to I think, like, the, great, the, the best know. example I can give uh, that I remember <laughs> of, like, where I saw a company doing it was a Why are you pointing me. your finger at me? I don't know. <laughs> it's just kind of out here in the universe. I remember back on my Xbox 360, in one year I get Madden, right? And, you know, you get all the stadiums and all the alternate uniforms, right? All the alternate old stadiums. And next year it comes out and all of a sudden all of this stuff, a ton of it is DLC. And it's like all of a sudden now I've got to buy every uniform or uniform packs for the NFCs. That didn't go well, did it? No, it did not. Right. And they got proper backlash. Like that kind of thing to me is like proper backlash. It's like you're not putting things in here just because you want to make money. That's what it is. And that's where people get pissed. Uh, finally, Dave writes in. He writes in a lot. David. Hi, David. He 
He says, "Hey, Chris, John, and S H A U N." He didn't. Shot. He did not get it right. He did. He wow! Did. Look at that. Kudos to you, my friend. He says three things with three explanation points. Uh, one, congrats to both the Tide and Georgia for making the playoffs. Ooh. Bama definitely deserved the edge over Ohio State, and Georgia has just flat out rocked this year. I'm a Mississippi State fan, but I would love to see Nick Saban win another national title. It's trendy to think he's a Richard, but I believe he's <laughs> genu- genuinely a nice guy who's a bit OCD. Yeah, OCD is a little bit. Uh, he said OCD really fast, yeah, didn't he? A OCD. bit OCD. No, the only redeeming quality for Alabama is Nick Saban. Ouch. What about their classic uniforms? Yeah. Those things are ugly. I've always thought they were ugly. You know, you all the say UGA that. Bulldogs. Their 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 uniforms pretty. You wear khakis and a button up every day. Speaking you are the of king which, of tradition. Speak, speaking of which, Aiden is now a UGA fan. Yeah, we call those Fairweather Johnsons. Yeah, who do you fish? Wrote about. We don't need them. Fairweather Johnson. He only wants us when we're champions. And eh, you can get out of here. I've been tr- I've I've been probing him on this for a week. I'm like, what what happened? Why they won a championship yeah. and they're not in the playoffs? Or he didn't think we we're getting in the playoffs, didn't he? I tried to get him to admit that, but that I don't know that yeah. it's, that's what it is anymore. It he made- said he said every he said every Saturday my dad has a bulldog party, and my mom is a UGA fan, and my dad is a UGA. Why was he rooting for Alabama in yeah, the first probably place? Probably for what you said. Same to reason begin with. you started pulling for him back hmm. in the day. Oh, he no. moved here from Maryland. Yeah, and then picked a team. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I came down here. These no, guys I actually, win. I started rooting for Alabama in 2006. Yeah. Exactly my point. Which was before Nick Saban yeah, came they, here. They sucked, then John. And we were terrible. Yeah, <laughs> I came down and really at first I didn't. I kind of went around the map at first, like. I, I, went to, I went to I went to a Georgia game. I yeah. watched Georgia get shellacked by Tennessee you in the third a, quarter. You were a lost boy. Um, with and my roommate was a UJ fan, but yeah, then I started hanging out more with Mikey and O and all those guys, and all of them were Alabama fans. And yeah, it's like that. You start watching every Saturday, and when you finally get to that swing where Nick came in. And well, we you blocked also, that field goal on Tennessee. There were just things that happened. And you also said that you love the tradition and, yes. and, and the come. Yeah. yeah. You have and to I be- really like Nick Saban as a coach. I, I liked him when he was at LSU too. And, uh, well, I'm not going to say Michigan State. I was rooting for him when he was in Miami, uh, cause I didn't have an AFC team. I didn't care. I wasn't rooting against him. How many teams do you have, Christopher? Just the Redskins in the NFL. Okay. Yeah. Hail. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, h-a-i-l back, anyways John. david's like what about the rest of my freaking email <laughs> um, that was part one anywho if georgia and bama end up in the title bout i have a feeling both myself and the entire weekly games chat production staff will be in a state of unadulterated <laughs> ecstasy so no judgment if you guys take the week off that week to show <laughs> <laughs> to show uh, uh that week from the show to wallow in sec pride I'll be right there with you. Two and three, guys, what's your game of the year and what's your favorite beer or style of beer? Peace on or peace out and game on. Uh, uh, beer, I just like a lager. Oh. Ooh, he wants. Okay. Ooh, he sent me a. He, he had a postscript that's just, just for, for you. us. Yeah, just oh, for us. Okay. To read off air? Um, or but no? yeah, yeah, read off air. Okay. Oh. I like a lager. Uh, I am an IPA man. Yeah, you are. I'm an IPA. My dad is called literally IPA Chris. Yes, he is. <laughs> so the apple did not fall far from the tree. As far as game of the year, you're gonna have to come back later for those kinds of Ooh, things. Man. Yeah, we don't we don't give that away for free. That's end of the well, year, New Year type stuff. We we do give it away for free, but yeah, we give it the next year. Are we teasing a giveaway? Did you just do that? No. no. Okay. Oops. <laughs> John dies. Why are I mean, you be like John? <laughs> Anyways, uh, so those were our emails from weeklygameschat at gmail.com. You can write in if you want to. That's weeklygameschat at gmail.com. Or you can tweet us at the Twitters, twitter.com slash weeklygameschat. Sean, who tweeted us? I just got a couple uh, that I'm, I'm going to highlight this week. Um, I want to give a big shout out to at Big Riff. Um, he, he decided to have a poll and ask the question, who's your favorite host on at Weekly Games Chat? Uh, Richard? Richard or Richard. Richard. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, Richard did win 42 to 29 and 29. So that was awesome. And also, uh, I got a, I think I've only got like maybe one response so far. I just put it out yesterday. Uh, I asked you guys, it's the most wonderful time of the year. What games do you hope hashtag Santa brings you? Um, and I do have a response. Let me see what it is. 
We'll see how this works. Uh, at Carl Hayes, 21 said, Battlefront 2 and Gears of War Ultimate Edition. Ooh. Nice. Battlefront 2 is fun. Like, uh, if you listened to our show last week, we had some, some concerns about it, but overall, it's a Star Wars experience, and Gears of War is the jam. So it's Gears of War. It's Gears of War, exactly. So uh, I'll ask you guys, is there anything you're hoping you're getting for Christmas? A um, digital audio recorder. <laughs> That's not a game, Chris. Oh, I'm kidding. Uh, I think I have all the games I need for this Christmas. Is there? There's not one that you hope to get. I'll tell you what's going to happen, John. Uh, mm. Not one right now, but I know on Christmas Day there's going to be a freaking Steam sale, yeah. and there'll be five million games I want to get. It's probably. the most wonderful time of the year for you. Yeah, I didn't even realize I wanted them, but I got to buy them so I can put them in my library. And never yeah, because your them. library compared to my library, yeah, it's ridiculous. Ridunculous. Yeah. John, is there anything you're hoping you get from oh. video game wise? Santa? D- digital audio recorder. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, okay. Well, good. Uh, yeah. Like, I've, I've purposely not bought any new games because I just don't know what I'm going to get from anybody or Santa. I don't know if I'm going to see if I'm Santa- holding off on Odyssey because I don't know. I just feel like, <sighs> what are you doing? <laughs> That game's amazing. Uh, speaking no. of the Switch, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm hoping either I get it or Santa brings it as Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Yeah. I want to play that. Santa mm-hmm. could bring me a new Switch. <laughs> <laughs> we should, if Santa's we name should is, totally is talk to Santa and make Sean it Sean and John. He doesn't deserve a Switch. Ouch. He's been, At least I play he, their exclusives when been, they come he's out. He's been a good boy. He's not on the naughty list. Jeez. Oh. Uh, uh-huh. Something. <laughs> John's just like pondering mysteries of the universe over Let's there. Move on. I, you got on. anything else, John? No, I'm good. I, we, our, I'm looking at our time and everything. Yeah, yeah. It's We're getting good. late. We took a long one on this one. We did. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sometimes you just need a long one, right? Uh, you do, you can't just push it out. That's how you get Henry. Um, <laughs> oh, we're talking about okay. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> Henry. If you want to. Mention us on Twitter. Sean will read out your mentions next week. That's once again Twitter slash Weekly Games Chat. You can also get us on Facebook too, where I posted that wonderful link. If you want to um, listen to John's discussion with BK about what he thought oh. was the console you need for this Christmas, what's that, Sean? I do have one more. I did want to bring this up, and I okay. apologize for break, breaking off in your rant. I answered for myself, rant? but I, I thought to myself I would ask you two uh, at Baldy Pal. Said at Weekly Games Chat, I've never played either of these titles in the past. Past, so do you have a recommendation for the Nintendo Switch, Skyrim, or Resident Evil? Oh, um, uh, which Resident Evil is it? It's he, not. It's not seven, right? No, it's um, it's those two. Um, the first two games. Revelations. I said uh, my vote is Skyrim. I'm yeah, not yeah, sure yeah, what yeah. John or Chris would say. I will always recommend Skyrim. It's By Skyrim. reputation, I would recommend Skyrim. I mean, yeah. everyone should play that game. It, he did. Hasn't. He he did reply to me and said he was actually leaning that way too, um, because of the four point nine stars and two hundred seventeen reviews. That or he got. Doom. Yeah, Doom would be a good one to get because they get, get what you should get Doom on your PS4, or Xbox <laughs> One if you have it, or really your PC. Well, but if he just has a Switch, Chris. If he just has a Switch, then I guess you could sell for it. <laughs> uh. Anyways. Okay. Resume. Sorry. Yeah. Resuming. Um, yeah, you can find John's, uh, a link to John's appearance on player, the player way podcast to discuss which console he thinks you should get this fall. I, I didn't even listen to the whole thing and I, I can already tell you what the answer is. You probably can too, if you're a loyal listener of the show, but it's still probably a really good conversation and it's friend of the show, BK, you got to hear. What up, BK? And you only have to tolerate John to hear BK. So that's a good <laughs> trade off. Um, <laughs> if you like the show. Subscribe to us on whatever podcast service you choose. We're on all sorts of ones, the Googles, the the Stitchers, the the iTunes, the Amazons, I think. Technically the YouTubies. Um <laughs> YouTubies. Yeah. We're we're out there for your listening pleasure in many ways. Oh, uh, and pleasure it is. Yes. Uh and if they have a rating or review system, drop us either or both, if they include both. Five stars out of five is the preferred one, but you know, we'll sell for four. Anything less? I don't settle, Chris. Okay. Apparently five. We're going with five. <laughs> uh, Aim high, Willis. 
this has been episode, I believe, 131 what? of the show. What? It was show. just like 116. Well, you know, time marches on, as Tracy Lawrence says. Time marching on. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time. Which we'll probably have a game for you to hear about. <laughs> One of these games, I don't know. Uh, you can... Put it on the board! <laughs> I would just say, uh, before we get out... Well, until next time, one last thing. Make sure... What, I, I just, what happened? Make sure to watch the Video oh. Game Awards. Again, December 7th. That's tomorrow. 8.30 p.m. So, you Eastern know, time, 5.30 yep. Pacific. That's tomorrow. Correct. So go... Mountain is... is, is let him do the math. Let him do the math, <laughs> yeah, Chris. Just let him do Central, it. Central seven thirty. And I don't like mountain, <laughs> mountain, 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 mountain whatever. Out of mountain. Are you welcome to the mountain. <laughs> uh, but anyways, <laughs> until <laughs> next time, <laughs> I will simply say, game on, John. Game on, Chris. Game on, John. Game on, everyone. Your, <laughs> game on, John. <laughs> and God bless us. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom's box. Peace out, everybody. Thug life. <laughs>